I wouldn't have been here yet, but Squid raided in, so might as well thank Squid. Hey, Squid. You came for stories. Oh, I'm sore tonight. Um, I'm legitimately sore. Yeah. Um, we'll get into it. We'll get into it. Um, yeah. I, I, I just hope it's, you know, temporary. Ah. Uh. All right. Um, well, I mean, if you guys want DGen story time this soon, fair by all means. Um, no, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Like, never, never, never feel bad about asking me for DGen story time. Um, I'm just a little in my head about it tonight because, uh, you know, you come out of something with that kind of hey maniac, that kind of soreness around certain areas, and you know, it's it can put you it can put you into some downtime. Um, so I'm a little in my head about it tonight. That's all. <clears throat> but since uh, Zippy wants me to fucking record these things from now on, uh, I shall record them. Um, let me actually just, yeah, I'll just kill the music. So, tonight's Tuesday, right? Like, tonight's, you know, tonight is a Tuesday. So, oh, service, service. Um, I did my typical preparations. Um, except today I didn't, um, stretch beforehand. Um, there were no plugs put into service. Um, let me move us out of where we are right now, which I personally think may, may have contributed to, I think there's two factors here that may have contributed to, um, but I went, I took stuff, I arrived, um, upon arrival, um, my dom, sir, was upstairs. Um, as I've stated before, when he knows that I am arriving, the door remains unlocked. Um, I'm to walk in, strip, lock the door, lock the door behind me, strip, and prepare for whatever. Um, tonight... I knew what I was in store for in a couple of ways. Um, but my jaw, I, you know, as some of you know, I have like TMJ from time to time and shit like that, right? My jaw's a little wonky. Um, so he's been holding off on what he wants, what he really prefers and enjoys, um, which is a little bit of, uh, you know, oral servicing. Um, so I proceeded upstairs. I walked into his bedroom, which is where he was, and he had a sort of, um, shall we call it an ad hoc throne. Um, he had a chair um, that reclined to a certain extent um, and a fairly cushy pillow with a towel draped over it uh, at, at between his legs, and he had porn going on the TV. Um, and it was very simple. What was expected? Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah. So, I mean, you know, without being too graphic about it, I, I started doing the job at hand. Um, he didn't have his piercing in this time. Um, so I could really kind of get to it. Um, some notes. Hands are cheating. Hands are cheating. If you get a blowjob and somebody starts like they start and then all of a sudden they're doing this action, right? They're cheating. They're cheating. Um, they, they don't have the skills that it takes or they don't have the discipline, or they don't have the, you know, gumption to see the job through. 
They don't have the perseverance, right? So go into town and you can, you can get a pretty good read on someone. You get a good, pretty good read on someone. Um, if you don't have, if you don't involve the hands and you just sort of post up the hands on the thighs, you can also read the thighs, the muscular contractions of the thighs, twitches and you know, this sort of thing, right? You can, you can get a pretty good read on somebody and you know where they are along the process. Right. So just doing my thing, um, going to town and getting a good read on it and, you know, figuring out what he likes, what he doesn't like, what sends him a little further and, you know, backing off and then, you know, and he had stated at one time, he said, you've got a good enough read on me at this point. You're even teasing me, aren't you? I said, you know, I didn't say anything. What I did was a double tap, right? Because I'm not stopping. I'm still going. A, a verbal response or, you know, even taking the moment to, uh, right? That's interrupting the flow. You're trying to build, right? You're trying to, you're trying to get a pattern going. And so, like, interrupting that can undo a lot of work. So you just respond by tapping the thighs, right? Do you want some pro tips? Here's some fucking pro tips. Um, so I'm just doing my thing, right? How many of you have ever gotten a 20-minute-plus uh, blowjob? Think about it. Think, think, think long and hard, actually. Like, about, like, how long somebody actually gives you a blowjob Right? Like some of you probably have had cumulatively 20 minutes of blowjob in your life. Right? Usually it's a precursor. Usually it's something as a warm up. Usually it's something to tease you a little bit. It's to, you know, get the process going, get the blood flowing. Who, you know, how many of you actually had a pro proper fucking blowjob before? Right? Like it's, it's not a common occurrence. Um, oof, caboose. Um, I'm telling you, man. If you, if you had the persuasion, I'd fucking solve that. No problem. Um, curious or gets it. <clears throat> um, you had a 20 minute, pl uh, 20 plus minute blowjob once, uh, beastical. It's probably, it's probably about the longest. Most don't make it past 10 without giving up. Yep. Um, and so I, I'm, I'm of the persuasion where I'm, you know, reading and, you know, if you get that sort of thing, you slow down or you change and you work the undercarriage, um, you know, you give them a second, you back off, or you fucking go full bore all the way down, right? And you just bury it and hold it. Um, <laughs> only on opits. Um, so since he's older, he's, uh, his glands is going to be slightly more keratinized. Um, so it, it takes a little more stimulation. The older, the older the penis, the more stimulation and the more specialized stimulation it takes usually. Um, by that point, there's a set thing, right? That it takes to, to do the job, right? So just figuring them out, just reading them, getting a good, you know, a good read on, um, interesting, sensation on the tongue the piercing hole since he's had his piercing long a long time he can take it out and there's a very distinct hole right there that you can sort of across um that's a new one on me um so yeah i was just going to town doing my thing and going and going and going and going we broke the 30 minute mark no problem I, you know, by this point, there is, you know, saliva pretty much everywhere, right? Because, like, after you get in there and you fucking actually properly tongue bathe a lot of stuff and you fucking get under and in and that sort of thing and, you know, you end up, you end up pretty much covered in slobber. Like, that's just, and then, you know, if you're really going at it that long, like, swallowing you know, while you're in the motion becomes a little, so you, you end up drooling and slobbering and that sort of thing. Right. And many people find that just 
part of the show and find that very attractive. Um, it's a turn on for a lot of fucking people. <clears throat> so I'm going at it and I'm going at it and I'm going at it. And I notice, hey, Gemma, I, uh, we'll get to it. Um, but thank you. Um, I'm starting to lose him, right? Like it's starting to, I can sort of feel it. Like on a nice upstroke through between the fucking lips, you can sort of feel it. Not quite the rigidity that was there. Right. And doing my thing, doing my thing. And eventually I just sort of come, come off and I look at him and he goes, I think, I think I'm, uh, I think I'm a little overstimulated at this point. He goes, I, I think I'm, I'm going to, I think I'm losing it. Um, pick X or Roni, D-Gen story time. You walked in on D-Gen story time. If you can't handle like a sexual story, trust me, you need to leave. Um, so, but he's super fucking grateful, right? Like he, he, he's at this point would, okay. So I'm between his, between his legs and just sort of post it up, right? Post it up. And he's just sort of stroking the back of my head and watching a bit of porn and just enjoying the sort of afterglow of the moment and telling me exactly how good of a job I did, right? Like he, he was, you know, very good boy. I'm proud of you. It's good for, you know, okay. So that sort of stuff, right? Like, and striking the fucking, all right, right? It's that kind of moment. <laughs> So, you know, I'm just, until he tells me otherwise, my role is to sit here between his legs, right? Like, that's my job right now. So I just do that. And eventually he's, um, he says, you know, all right, let's, let's get you in this line. Right? Cool. Actually, at one point he said, you know, I'm tempted to just fuck you right here. And I said, if you can get it hard, sir, well, throw it in me. Right. I wish we had done it all uh, hindsight. I wish we had done it. Um, <clears throat> but so everybody to the playroom, right? It's like that. Everybody to the fucking playroom. So go to the playroom. The playroom's lightly, mildly lit, right? His bedroom was dark. The playroom is mildly lit because you need to see what you're doing in there. Right. Um, so, you know, there's there's a process to things. He and I have a pattern at this point. There's a, there's a process. And, you know, I get up in the sling. And he hasn't prepared any, like, Crisco or any of the, 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 the fist lube stuff or the mixture. Um, and he's going to use, like, a different lube, right? Remember I said that there was a couple of things that I think contributed, right? So fast forward. I've got a little of a hot spot, shall we say. Top, let's say 12 o'clock. All right. If your chest is 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock, um, it, 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 either way. So the process starts, I'm not going to walk y'all through it, but he starts from scratch, right? No plugs, no loosening. It's, it's from scratch. Um, and I think the from scratch plus the like typical lube, did not work as good as other options. And so I've got a little bit of a sore spot, which I've checked, no tears, no nothing. But yeah, it, it, it you know, with this sort of thing, um, we did make it further than previous, the previous one. Gains were made. Gains were made. Um, decent gains. Uh, but we'll see at what cost tomorrow and the next day. That's, that's how this will play out is I will see tomorrow um, as to how this feels. Could be nothing. Could be everything. We'll see. Wouldn't be the first time. But um, during that session, He came clean about 
um, something I can't talk about. It's personal and private to him. And, of course, I'm going to respect that. But what I can do is allude to the fact that it was very personal, very, like, very private and very personal to him. Um, and because I said, I, I got in the sling and I basically crossed my arms and I said, I'm going to pout now. And he said, what? I said, I'm going to pout now. I didn't, I didn't get my reward, right? Like the fact of the matter is, is that I, I, you know, went, I, I, I worked for 30 minutes plus, right? And I didn't finish the job. And that annoys me. It has nothing to do with him. As to everything to do with me, right? Like it, it, it's it, that bothers me that I left a job uncompleted like that. And he 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 said something, and I laughed. He said, yeah, "Trust me on this one. It's not you. It's me." And I started laughing my ass off. I said, "Like that is, um, yeah, curious or no, you're not." Um, I said, you know, I started laughing my ass off. He's like, what? I'm like, dude, that's the, the classic line, right? Like, it's not you, it's me. Um, and that's when he shared something intensely personal. And he said, you know, that's in my head right now. I'm like, no, I get it now. I get it. Like, I get it. I said, did I at least give you, like, some moments of vacation in your head? Like, did I, did I pull you out of it for at least a couple minutes? He said, oh, yeah. So I enjoyed, you know, he said, but at the end of the day, you know, that's, that's in my head right now. I'm like, okay. All right. I get it. I, I, I hundred percent get it and I respect it. Right. Like it was, it was something intensely personal and like that he's dealing with right now. So I get it. So we, you know, <clears throat> we do the thing. Um, he gets further inside me than he did before. Um, and we, you know, sort of wrap up the session. Um, we, we finish up, wipes me up, you know, I hop out of the sling and this is where it gets a little fun, 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 right? Like, cause that's, that's work. That's work, right? That's work. Trust me. It's work. That um, the nearest thing I can tell you is if you have no experience in this arena, just go and try and do a split. Right? Go and try and do a split and just like have somebody push down on your shoulders. See how that works. Right? It's it's you're gonna you're gonna be like, oh wow. Right? It's the only comparable thing I can I can tell you to do. Um it, you know, at one point he he said, you know, how are you doing? How does that feel? And I said, you know, through through the grimace, through the, whew, I you know, I, I managed to be a smarmy little bitch. And I said, it, sound, it, it feels like somebody has their fist inside me, sir. <laughs> He's like, oh, oh, well, in that case, you know, and he fucking pushed. And like the whole sling, right? The whole sling. It's like, oh, my God. 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 Right? <clears throat> yeah, but we finished up and we, we went downstairs. He said, let's go downstairs. And he just like, like I, like I said, remember the first time that I went over there and I explained to you guys that like the role of a sub is not always like explicitly sexual. A lot of the time is just being eye candy or being present or being a conversation piece or something, right? Or just serving in some way, shape, or form. And so, like, you know, this is this is firmly in that territory. He's, he's um, you know, he's, he's still bottomless. Um, he's got, he's put on a, a shirt, um, but he's still rocking the, the bottomless sort of thing, the Winnie the Pooh look, right? Um. We go downstairs and sit in his, what I think is his favorite chair. Yes, Gemma, basically being attentive in general. Um, and, you know, I follow instead. And, you know, he's like right between my legs. So I sit there and he, um, you know, ottoman up, 
legs up and just sort of like laying on him, right? He just he just wants me on him. He just wants physical contact at this point. And so he starts with the nipples. I don't know about y'all's, but mine are connected. <clears throat> They're connected. So, you know, he just starts going to town on them. And we're, you know, he's talking to me in general and trying, you know, figuring stuff out. He's like, you know, how sensitive are your ears? How sensitive are your neck? These sorts of things, right? And we're just enjoying each other's company. Um, and he, you know, he asked me, he's like, have you ever been flogged? And I reminded him that on the first meeting, I told him the story about the last time I was flogged and how I laughed because... It, Hey, Watkins, thanks for the host. Because it reminded me of um, being in a banya, right? A Slavic or a Russian spa where they use birch leaves, birch, birch branches with leaves attached and they beat you with them, right? To like exfoliate and stimulate and that sort of thing, right? And I had this moment with this Dom where, I, I, you know, he's flogging me and thicker flogs, like, you know, like legitimately like leather straps, like, yeah, three fingers wide. Um, and so I started laughing because it reminded me of being in a banya. And, you know, that's, that's, I can imagine what that does to, like, I, I don't even, like, I've witnessed it from the other side, but I can imagine what that does to a dom psychology, right? Like, you're, you're fucking flogging your sub, and they're giggling, right? Like, they're giggling. That's, that's no, there's no grimace, there's no biting the lip, there's no, uh, you know, there's no recoil. It's fucking... <laughs> It reminded me of being in a banya. Um, so I'm giggling. And so, you know, he tries to... So I told him this story the first time. And he, I, you know, he's like, have you ever been, you know, um, have you ever been flogged? And I said, I reminded him. I said, the last time he goes, yeah, well, you know, I haven't flogged you. I'm like, well, you have a little bit. He's like, yeah, I haven't really flogged you. Um, yeah, big axeroni. I like it. <clears throat> I'm like, all right. He's like, do it. Get up. Let's go upstairs. Let's go back upstairs. Um, so I follow him upstairs and he's got this in the playroom. He's got this seat and I've described it before. The ones that the legs go over, but this time he's trying to figure out like, he's like, can we get you like face first into this thing? He's like, you know, that sort of thing. Like, can you put your legs through these, this sort of like the, where the arms come up and stuff like that? Can you, you know, we're trying to figure it out. Like we're literally doing like tech support, troubleshooting, trial and error sort of shit, but with BDSM and like equipment and toys and shit. Right. And so I get in. I mean, sort of, he's like, you know, hang on, let me put a pad down. He puts, so he doesn't have to clo clean anything, right? He puts down, like, changing pads and that sort of thing, right? Puts it down, and I fucking slip in. And, you know, I'm like, yeah, no, this this kind of works. It kind of works. And so he goes goes to his bedroom and comes back with a couple of flogs, right? Like, and he's got one. And, well, he comes back with one. And he's like, here's my flog. And, I, you know, I'm sick. I'm going to take it. And it's really thin straps, like, probably two thirds of the size of my pinky really thin straps and cheap leather, cheap leather. I could tell right away. I'm like, this thing's going to hurt. This thing's going to fucking hurt. Right? Like there's no way around it. Um, and so, well, be skull. He goes, well, let me, I made a, I made a, I made a comment. I was like, you know, Oh, this, you know, he's like, Oh, well, let me go get my good one. I'm, I'm like, oh, okay, well, let's see what the good one looks like, right? He comes back. It's got barbed wire on it, but leather. It's literally leather mock barbed wire. I'm not shitting you. It's, it's mostly a flog, but there are maybe 8 to 12 pieces of leather that are simulated barbed wire that are literally formed leather. I have never seen it before in my life. 
I've never even seen this thing before. I'm like, I didn't even know you could make leather do this, right? Like, this is formed leather. It is, uh, Beast of holy shit, I've only seen those on display. Well, guess what, Beast? I've seen it up close and personal. Um, so, I'm like, holy shit, man. Like, this is fucking insane, right? Like, this is, this is fucking crazy. Like, don't worry, I'll use the other one, right? So I, I'm in, I'm in this, I'm in the seat and you know, I'm fucking face down in it and he starts cause he's never, um, he's never, uh, used it like used this chair this way on a boy before. Right. So we're literally trying to like, we're literally troubleshooting. I mean, full tech support consultant mode, right? Like I literally am. That's where my mind, my, my headspace is at this moment in time. I'm literally like paying attention to where the pressure points are on my legs and my arms and my shoulders. And can, can he get access is it like, cause of the leg stirrup things. Can he get in correctly with his swing on the flog? Right? Like I'm doing full diagnostics with each swing in my head as he goes through this. And I'm sort of like repositioning myself and seeing if I can't, like if you arch, you know, your lower back, this sort of thing. And he's going to town on my upper, like, you know, upper torso, this sort of thing. Like, Right. Um, and so I'm more, you know, I can, I can take it. Trust me. I can take it. Um, so he takes a break and I'm like, you know, I'm like, I could hear you clip the handles, right? Like I could hear you come in on the handles and it's slowing the swing down. I'm like, this is, this is inhibiting. You can't get a full swing on, you know, you can't get a full wind up and crack with, with the flog properly. And I'm like, so can we, we, you know, and we go back into diagnostic mode so we can lower the, the back down even further so I can get there. And I'm like, wait, hang on a second. So where the legs are going through now, I'm like, hang on, let me see if I can go further back actually, and not put them through these two holes and like swing them around. And so I get, actually get into this altered position. I'm like, this actually works, but I'm kicking my legs up. And he's like, well, your, your knees look like they need to be supported. Let, let's get a fuck. Let's get a stool under your knee and see if that allows you to just sort of take the weight. And he's like, well, let's put some padding, but this starts extending my hip flexor. It starts to like hyperextend my flex, hip flexor. And I'm fairly flexible to start with. I'm like, you put any other random boy and a fucking, like any dude with like meatier thighs than me, this isn't going to work. I'm like, so get rid of the stool entirely. He's like, really? I'm like, yeah, get rid of the stool entirely. If I lean forward and hitch a little bit, I'm like, okay, now this could work for a proper BDSM scene, right? Like look down at my ankles. He's like, yeah, oh, I see what you mean. We could cuff your ankles. Like if I put your ankle in a cuff and then hooked it to the metal, it would suspend the ankle in a natural position but you'd be like cuffed to, I'm like, and then look at the hands. I'm like, look at this bar back here that you could like literally latch somebody to. I'm quite literally serving as a submissive BDSM consultant at this moment in time. Like we're figuring shit out of how to use this machine in alternate ways and that sort of thing, right? Like legitimately, like this is not how this is designed. This is not what it's intended for. Let's figure this out. Right. And we're working together on this. So I get into this alternate position. He starts going at it again. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable, quite frankly. Like I'm, I'm just sort of laying there and I'm, I'm fucking comfortable. I, it's, you know, and, and I asked him, I'm like, can you go a little lower? And because we understand, oh, you boring, you boring people. I'm like, can you go a little lower? He's like, well, I, I worry about the kidneys. I'm like, dude, it's not like you're punching me. You don't have to worry about, you don't have to worry about that. I'm like, you can go lower with a light flog like that. And he's like, are you sure? I'm like, yes. I'm like, it's not like you're going to cause kidney damage with surface hits like that. And so he goes a little lower and we, we change positions a couple few more times and he's like, well, how are you doing? I said, I'm fine. Um, it, I literally took a, a, hit, a hit of poppers at one point. He's like, what are you doing? I said, eh, I figured I'd give you some assistance. He's like, really? I said, yeah, there's a vascular flush, right? We'll cause, cause some vasodilation and get a vascular flush here. And it, it, I tend to flush when I do them anyway. So I'm like, let's help you out, right? Um, yeah, um, 
Yeah, exactly, Gemma. <laughs> Good luck with that, you boring fuck. Um, go have your go have your patriarchal fucking missionary style boring ass sex with your pseudoscience. All right, fucking. Good luck to you. Honestly, good luck to you. I'll take my interesting sex capades though. Um, so he starts going to town again and I'm, he's like, you doing fine. I'm like, yeah. He's like, well, let's try this then. He switches over to the other fucking flock. The one with the mock barbed wire leather. Um, Well, Beasticle, if you want to know what it feels like, it feels sharp. That's what it feels like. It feels sharp. It's not sharp enough to break skin. It definitely could if you went to town hard. You wind up and fucking crack that thing. I promise you that breaks skin. Promise. But it's it's sharp. That's the feeling from that flog, right? Like there's a, like, it's difficult to describe the feeling of being like caned or flogged or paddled or these sorts of things. Right. But we use like sharp or warming or a smacking or a stinging or a, you know, these sorts of things. Um, it's, it's sharp. It's a, it's a sharp crack against your skin. Um, so we will, you know, so he's, he does a few, swipes with it and then i hear the handle because it's got a longer handle i hear the handle crack against the fucking handle on the uh one of the with the the handholds on the machine and i'm like there we go see this doesn't work for that flog i'm like it works for the other flog just fine but this one it doesn't work he's like yeah i know i would want and at this point we go back into troubleshooting mode right He's like, I thought about like, you know, using the, um, the frame of the sling and, you know, having, having a boy up there like that. He said, but then you can't actually like support yourself. Everything comes down on the wrist and the shoulder at that point. And so you're, you're constantly either flexed. And so that does a whole other interaction on the back, which is fine for short. He's like, you know, I thought about getting a portable St. Andrews, but holy shit, are they expensive? And so we're, you know, I start looking around the room and like, okay, so how can we redesign this? And at one point I mentioned, <clears throat> well, Gemma, um, at one point it'll come up shortly. Um, I'm like, I need to bring my collar over here. He's like, what? I said, I need to bring my collar over here. Like, I just, I feel like wrong, not wearing it. And he's like, oh, well, what kind of collar do you have? I'm like, it's a buffalo leather faux fur. You know, it's, you know, he's like, well, give me a second. And I'm just on this fucking, I'm face down, right? And I hear rummaging from a distance, right? Somewhere on the top floor. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. I have to take a, a second here aside. I know it's Gen story time, but did the Marxist Leninist just say an ideology is antiquated? <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, anyway, I hear him rummaging, uh, often like a, a closet somewhere on this floor of the house and <clears throat> he comes back. And he's got a collar, right? And he's like, here. And he tries to put it on me while I'm on the machine, right? And it's just the wrong position. I'm leaning forward. It's fucking, he's, he's like, yeah, I, we'll, we'll do it another time. Kai is now sad. Kai wants that collar, right? Like that's, you have to understand. Those of you who know what this is about, you know what this is about. Those of you who don't, there's no real way to explain this to you. You just have to understand that this that that collar represents a, a role, an identity, a, um, a psychology, a method of operation. Um, it, it it it's a thing. It's not just a piece of leather that goes around your neck. It's a big fucking deal. It's a big fucking deal. And um, yeah, why not?
Um. It's right there. It's right fucking there. All right? It's a big fucking deal. Beast. It is. It's a very big deal. Like, for a dom to put a collar on a sub is a very big deal. It's not taken lightly. It's not taken lightly at all. Right? And the fact that he was... He he, he was willing to... Will do. um, To do that. Like that, right? Like we talked about this last time, right? Like with the massage and how I knew, like I was sort of marking my territory. Like I knew what I was doing and that I sort of got him into that. Like, and he literally said, you know, I think I'll keep you around. Yeah, I know. Right. Like, and this time it, 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 it's, it's, it's an important thing, right? Like it's, it's, it's not like just a fucking piece of leather. And I know that, and I know he knows that, and I know he knows I know that, right? And so he can't quite get it on me, and I'm like, uh, right? But he wants to go back to flogging. Fine, let's go back to flogging. He flogs me for a little while longer. He works the legs. He works the ass. He works the upper back. He works down the middle of the spine because he's still not comfortable hitting the sides where the kidneys are. Hey, old habits die hard. Um, Yes, Gemma, it's a fucking big deal um and so you know he goes for a while and he you know he's like you know he's like okay you know he's like i haven't really shown you any of the stuff that i have have you have i and i'm like no sir he's like well let's go to the other room we're getting show and tell show and tell boys and their toys everybody knows boys and their toys right so i get up and the first thing i do is I look at him and I look at the collar. I look at him and I look at the collar. He's like, okay, just come here, turn around. I put some, cause I, we're, I may have an inch on him or maybe we're basically the equivalent height. So working up here, right? Like you're, you're sort of working at somebody's neck level. Um, and so I put some bend in my knees to bring it down to work, bring it down to working level. And he's like, you don't have to do that. I'm like, okay. Fucking stand tall, stand proud, stand at attention, right? Do the deal. Um, and he did. He fucking put it on, stands back, looks at his handiwork. Um, Get as uh, middle of story time. Um, looks at his handiwork and says, "You know what? It's a good look on you. I think you might be wearing that more." <sighs> um, he went very happy. Kaboos! Very happy. Um, he went to the other room. He's like, um, <clears throat> I immediately took a photo in the mirror, right? Like, cause the wall was mirror. The wall was mirror. Phone's right there. I immediately took a fucking photo of me in the car. Like the fucking like that, right? Like that was just instant. Um, so I fall into the bedroom and before I can get a foot out the door, He's already back with a lead. A short one, too. Um, lead in, in Europe, Stan. Leash in America, Stan. Um, chain about that yay long with a leather end and a clip. And I'm hooked up. If he puts his arm all the way down, fully extended, I have to bow. That's that's the length of the lead. It's it's like that. <laughs> 
right? Like if he drops his arm, I have to bow. It, it is kind of the perfect length beast. It really is. Um, walk into his bedroom, now being led, right? Like properly led. Um, and he's got his closet open. And <laughs> lots to explain. Yeah, a lot to unpack there. And he's got his closet open and he's got a drawer under his TV open. And he's just like at that point he drops, uh, drops the lead um, and stands back again and looks at his handiwork. He's like, well, it does look good on you. I, yeah, it does. Um, and so he just starts pulling stuff out of the, the, the drawer. This is high quality gear, y'all. It's high quality. I mean, this is like top shelf leather gear. Top fucking shelf. Um, wrist and ankle cuffs. $350 for, for the set. If they're a dollar, aren't guaranteed. Guaranteed. This is the sort of this is sort of bougie shit. Trust me. Like y'all know to trust me on this kind of shit. This is quality leather. This is um, <laughs> uh, Ross a bit. Um, this is quality leather, right? Like this is this is these are good pieces. They're well manufactured. Like they're well made. Like they're handmade. Forget manufactured. They're handmade. They're high quality leather pieces. These are three hundred fifty dollars for the four of them. If they're a dollar. And so he starts, you know, pulling other stuff out and, you know, oh, here's some, you know, high quality clothespins with the rubber tips on them. And here's some vibrating this and then vibrating that. And I, you know, by this point, <laughs> I've got the, uh, the ankle cuff and I'm, I'm putting it on my left one. Like I'm just putting it on. And he's like, are you? Did you get the, I, and I'm pulling at it, right? I'm checking the tension. I'm checking, like, whether it slips off. Do I have it, like, adjusted correctly? What knot should it go to? And these sorts of things. I'm, I'm putting it on. He's like, did you get the ankle? I mean, the, it looks like the, 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 the wrist. No, sir. He's like, I always have to put them next to each other. I'm like, no. Um, the, uh, the wrist are four rivets. The ankles are five rivets, sir. I've already noticed this. Um... And there's this sort of hyper aware version of myself that goes into like the, the only way I can describe it is if like you're in a sketchy neighborhood in the middle of the night and now you're noticing all of the details because your brain is hyper aware. You know, your, your, your fight or flight survival instincts are dictating that your brain go into this super observant mode and you're just noticing the drop of a fucking pin three miles away at this point, right? Sub brain. It, it's, it's, it's a thing for subs. Like you, you go into that like hyper observant mode because every detail fucking matters. It matters. And so I've already got the left one on my ankle and I'm doing up by this point where we were talking about whether that's the right or left, right? I'm doing up the, the wrist one on my left, right? I'm cranking that fucker down, getting it to, cause it's stiff with like thick leather like that. You know, I'm getting it on. And I uh, start working on the right one and get that one up and then just sort of present the right wrist. There's no way I can do it. It has to be done. Like, there's no way I'm going to be able to bind it up correctly with my left. It's, it's just I need him to do this in more ways than one. It's not just the physical, right? Like, I can do three quarters of the work. But the final one kind of has to be him for more than one reason. And so I just sort of present it. And he takes it and takes my wrists. And, and I tell him, it's number two slot, sir. And he, he's like, number two? I'm like, uh, he's like, oh, from the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? They're cushioned. They're good, well made. And it's at this point that, like, now I have ankle and wrist cuffs that are very high quality on a very well made collar. (sighs) 
look. I can't explain this fully. Um, this is something you know or you don't. Those in chat right now, right now who have experience with BDSM, especially on the submissive side, yeah, that's, that's about as close as you're going to get to an explanation is, is exactly how Beast put it, is you feel kind of complete. You feel, you feel, I don't know, you feel clothed. You feel ready to start your day. You feel like the version of yourself you're supposed to be. It's, it's a very interesting psychological place to be. And <clears throat> once you're there, you don't want to leave it. It's, it's, it's uncomfortable to leave it. Um, so we continue going through the drawer. And I'm just, you know, I'm seeing the, the toys and stuff that he has and the latches and the, like, he's got um, hog tie, like figure four hog tie clips for them. And I'm, I'm just out of shits and giggles binding it up on the front. And he said, now imagine if I did that to you from behind the back, that sort of thing. Um, and, you know, we're just, we're just going through the drawer. Like, it's literally a couple of fucking boys going through the toy drawer and everybody knows this feeling, right? When you were, you were a kid, right? Think back. You're a kid and your friends come over and you show them your bedroom, right? You show them your fucking bedroom. You're like, and here's my power ranger or my, you know, my fucking whatever, right? You're showing them your toys. You're showing them your stuff, right? And there's that, there's that excitement. There's that bubbly nature to it, right? It's, it, it, it's a thing. It's a, it's a real thing, especially in Western culture, but it, it's definitely a thing, right? This is a couple of boys, despite the dynamic, despite the age gap, this is a couple of boys hanging out in one of their bedrooms, um, showing their toys. Curiouser, if you are doing Curiouser asked, is this a typical subdom experience though? Seems to be exceptionally in intimate. If you go out and hook up, no, this is not typical at all. If you find yourself a dom, eventually, yeah. Yeah, eventually it is. Eventually it's super fucking intimate. Um, Watkins, he's, he, he's, he's 20-ish years older than me. Um, well, I know what I'm doing, Curiouser, right? Like, I speed ran this. It, it, it's, this is, you have to sort of have heard the entirety of this story. I have basically speed run this as a sub. I have used every single trick in my book in my arsenal. I have basically come out like the fucking United States military out in this bitch and just took the entire like 11th fleet out to address a speedboat in the in near our coast, right? Like it's literally like I brought out a super carrier fleet to deal with like a, a just a random boat on the coast of the shore, right? I have literally used an astral thanks for the sub. Um I, I, I've, I've, with great intention, all right? So, yeah, it's about to get fucking real. Yeah, send in the CIA death squads, CIA death squads, basically, right? Like, I, I knew last time. I knew with the massage what I was doing. And now with the oral service on top of that from this session, giving him exactly what he needs, right? Giving him exactly what he needs. I, I... Uh, Watkins, he's my current dom. I wouldn't call him my partner. That's not that partner is an, an is an equal. Partner is somebody you share a life with. Partner is somebody that you you cohabitate with. Partner is somebody you, he is my dom. 
Yeah, that's that 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 in that implies a certain dynamic that does not exist. Um, we are not and will not be boyfriends or anything like that. This is this is a different type of relationship. This is something else entirely. Um Thank you, Corey. Um, yeah, Gemma, that is true. I am his sub. Gemma's correct in correcting me in that, by the way. Gemma is actually spot on correct. I am not, he's not my dom, I am his sub. The, the, the power dynamic is that direction. So we're sitting there and I'm playing with the, the sort of the, 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 the toys. Like, right, we're going through the toy drawer and... He, um, he's like, I stand up. Well, he's like, I have more, I have plenty more, but you're correct, Gemma. It is, it's a correction nonetheless. Um, I stand, he's like, I got, you know, let's look at the closet, right? Um, oh, Watkins, I did that last fucking session. I marked my fucking territory. Yeah, straight up. Um, He's like, let's look in the closet. I got, I got a couple of boxes of stuff, right? I've, I've seen a drawer like this, right? He's got boxes. All right, let's do this. I, he stands up. I stand up. Here's where this shit's about to get real, y'all. Mate, it's about to get real. Um... He grabs the lead, does a quick wrap, he kissed me, <sighs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. That's, that's, that's a whole other level of shit. That's a whole other level of shit. So I'm in, I'm in sub. There's no other way about that. Like that's, he straight up fucking collared me, yanked me in, marked me as his property. Basically. That's how that goes. Um, yeah. So, <clears throat> Sort of with this dawning realization that shit just got real, y'all. Shit just got real, y'all. Um, and fucking we go into the um, closet. And he starts unpacking, um, you know, Beast. Like that, that's, that's, see, here's the thing, Beast. Like that's work for me. That's work. Because it isn't. It isn't a thing in me. Like that, that isn't a thing. Like that, the, the, the stuff that most people would be like, holy shit, man, that's, that takes, that's, that's part of it. That's the stuff I enjoy, right? That part makes me intensely uncomfortable. Yeah. Cause it's, it's not a default state in my brain. Not at all. It, it, it makes, oh God. Um, no cricks. No, not at all. Unless other expectations are set. That's it. Um, no, unless, unless we, you know, say otherwise. Um, but yeah, like that, that makes me intensely uncomfortable. And for me, that is, that is a huge, huge work element of, of it is that. But so we go in the closet and, uh, fucking start unpacking these boxes. He holds out a bag that is a full body High quality leather harness. 14, la uh, 14 buckles to put this thing on. We didn't put it on. Didn't put it on. Um, 14 fucking buckles. Oh, no, withered. That's the thing. I don't. That's the thing. I think he may have. I do not. That's not how I feel about that. Um... 
yeah, 14 fucking buckles on this harness. It's a full body, high quality harness. He's like, next time. Um, I'm like, holy shit, man. Um, so, <clears throat> starts pulling out rope. Now, Gemma, remember, um, remember what is what you asked, Gemma? He pulls out a fu- uh, a fucking binding of rope, right? Properly wrapped rope. It's been a while since I've seen a properly wrapped rope. Pulls out the fucking rope. And I'm like, holy shit, full length bound uh, binding of rope, right? And I'm immediately like feeling it, checking for the core. I'm like, do you know what test strength this is? Right? Immediately, I'm like, I'm, I'm a rock climber again, right? I, I'm like, this is, what, what test rope is this? Does it, what kind of snap resist, uh, what kind of uh, end snap resistance does it have? Like, you know, I'm, I'm checking the rope out, right? I'm legitimately checking the rope out. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 all this other shit, all this other shit going on. None of that matters now. Now I have a fucking length of real fucking climbing rope. I, this is, this is proper line, right? And it's in my hands and I'm like, <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm thinking could, you know, I could probably go out the window with this, right? I could, you know, he's got gloves in the, in the drawer over there. I could do a bare hand Australian down uh, out the front, right? Like I'm sure we could tie it off on his bed frame. It'd probably, it would probably suspend me. Yeah. Like fucking, yeah, let's, let's fucking, let's use the, let's use this line, right? Let's do something, right? I got to full like the right. Yeah. It fucking, uh, it, it just immediately like that, right? Like it, like all of this other BDSM shit, all of this like dominant submissive stuff going on. You hand me some fucking rope and immediately I'm a climber again, right? Like, I'm just like, what can we tie this off to? <laughs> oh, Jesus. Goddamn Christ. So. Yeah, you know the nerds who love rocks? Kai, ooh, rope. Um, hands me a couple of other lengths of rope, actually. But this isn't proper climbing rope. This is BDSM play rope. That's that's what this is. This is specially manufactured. It's the soft nylon. It's with that, like, it, with that extraordinarily, like, uh, sort of, like, very soft weave to it so that it doesn't abrade either on you. Um, and you know, you can tell by the color also fucking the length that it's sold in and the color that you're like, yeah, this is, this is fetish rope as opposed to like real climbing rope, right? This I would never suspend anything from this rope, but if you want to bind someone perfectly fine, um, <laughs> uh, but also won't stretch and cut. Yep. Um, yeah, it's, it's, pro- it's, you know, it's specialty fetish rope. Um, I always forget the Japanese. What's the, the, the Japanese art of like BDSM tying stuff? Somebody's going to know it. One of you motherfuckers is going to know it. What's, what's the Japanese word for the, 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 their art of tying? Shibari. See, I knew one of you motherfuckers would know it. Shibari. T- two motherfuckers knew it. Shibari. <laughs> and probably more of you knew it, but just couldn't type it fast enough. Um, thank you, Che and Beastical. Um, proper fucking DJs. Yes. Uh, do you fucking, you'll get your, you'll get your renewed DGen card in the mail. Don't worry. Um, crit- <laughs> it's, yeah, my, yeah. <laughs> um, so I mean, I <laughs> um, so yeah, we're just still cleaning stuff out and hey, non non-binary. So we're still cleaning stuff out and hey Raphael and you know, he's like, here's some, you know, here's some testicle weights, here's some cock rings, oh, here's some extra lube, here's some other lube, here's some other lube, like here's some powder, like this sort of stuff. Like here's some more like, oh, here's an entire bed harness, like the under foundational bed harness. Like uh, some of you had to have seen a porn at least with one of these in, but basically it provides like 26 fucking latch points. You put it under the mattress, right? And then you 
up and it fucking you you can basically tie off to this in so many different ways you can latch to it you can tie off to it you can do runs with it um legitimately fucking kinks are us awesome up in there fucking curious here like straight up like i'm like jesus goddamn christ um so yeah like it, we're just cleaning out one of these boxes and he hands me some tape right like it's 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 binding tape right it's it's not for like your packages it's not this is specialty tape it's rubberized tape that is used for bondage play right like that's that's its purpose um it is a specialty product and he hands me the bag uh, he he doesn't hand me the bag he shows me the bag and he puts it up on a box right um and i eventually you know get done fetishizing the rope I have been holding the rope this entire time, Gemma. I've been holding the fucking rope. <laughs> um, you have to understand, y'all. Climbers and rope. It's it's y- there isn't a climber in the world that doesn't fetishize their rope, right? It's it's a thing. It's a thing, right? I've been fucking holding the rope, so I eventually get over the rope. Um. And I, I'm like, ooh, you know, shiny red tape in, in a Mylar bag, right? And I pick it up and I look and on the, the cardboard box, there's an oil stain. And I immediately do this. It's greasy. Um, sir? Yeah, boy. And I just reach it out and he takes it. I said, you may want to check on that sir he's like oh shit something has begun leaking somewhere in this box this is this is oil this is oil he goes i think this is uh, this is mineral oil he's like fuck you have to sort this out yeah so hands it back i'm like is it He's like, yeah, you can you can set it down. And you start, we start like emptying the box. We start emptying the box and fucking setting things and you know these sorts of things, setting things aside very quickly. And he finally gets to the bottom. He's like, mineral bottle of mineral oil, right, for various purposes. Bottle of mineral oil. He's like, you know, it looks like it was got it got squeezed, and so some of the mineral oil leaked out and has started to get into other stuff that it shouldn't be into whatsoever, right, and. This is legitimately my favorite moment of the night. I'm not kidding you. Not the not being put in the collar. Not the anything else. Anything else. He looks at me. He's like crouched in front of this box. I'm standing there at a detention with fucking ankle and wrist cuffs on, a collar and a lead, right? Just and then buck ass naked. Right? And he looks at me and he goes, uh, he goes, okay, I want you to go downstairs at the bottom of the steps as you walk, uh, walk straight ahead. That will be the laundry room forward to your left, the cabinet on the left, right hand door, all purpose cleaner, get that. Then come back upstairs in the playroom. There will be paper towels in front of the sling. Get both of those. Come back to me, boy. (sighs) Off like a fucking shot singularly minded right i there there is there is something that matters to your dom and you've been given clear and concise instructions nothing else exists nothing else fucking exists in that moment yes exactly it's a pure act of service which is exactly what i get off on right which is exactly what i get off on um just off like a fucking shot Right. And I know I'm already prioritizing. I'm like, I know where those paper towels are. I can fucking swing by on the way up because it's more efficient to do that, that cut over that way. I'm like, right. And making sure you don't slam fucking doors. You don't fucking, you know, you fucking, 
da, like soft clothes on everything. You're not trying to beat the shit out of stuff. This is somebody else's stuff. You respect it. You know, that sort of thing. Like you, you're full service mode. And I fucking come back and literally I've got the paper towels like a fucking roll holder. And I've got the, uh, I've got the fucking bottle on a pinky here hung there so he can just grab it. He takes the bottle. He takes a fucking, uh, a length of paper towels and I will start laughing after a few seconds. And he's like, what boy? I said, sir. He's like, you better not drip on my carpet. Fill in your own gaps. There you go. Um, caboose, probably. Probably. Um, it was there then, uh, then and there decided that I'd probably be kept in a jock strap from here on out to prevent that sort of potential incident from occurring. <laughs> it was perfect. It was perfect. Yep, <laughs> both of you went uh, before it. Um, it was perfect. Like I said, it was exactly what a sub wants, right? It's exactly what a sub wants, right? If if you're not, if you are still trying to figure out what the, the whole BDSM thing is about, yeah, it's about sex, sure. It's about that moment. It's a clear set of expectations of understandings of instructions of actions everything becomes clear in that moment there is no tomorrow there is no neoliberal hyper capitalism there is none of that there's him telling me what to do and me doing it and acting on it instantaneously and when you can find that mindset, when you can find that place in your brain, when you can find somebody who can tap into it, when you can tap into it, this is why I like climbing rocks, free climbing. This is why I like skydiving. This is why I like whitewater rafting. This is why I do all of the extreme things I do. When you're on a rock face, there isn't... Well, you know, what about that theory? What about Hegelian dialectics? No. It's keep climbing or die, dummy. It's find the next handhold. Process the, uh, the knowledge, right? It's pull the ripcord. It's watch out for that, next, uh, that next, next crash of the wave, right? You better navigate that rapid correctly or else you could overturn this raft and drown potentially. It's a singular, clear moment. There's a few ways to get there. You can get there through that too. Just to fill in some of the gaps for curiouser that's part of the sadism and masochism and it's part it's part of the chemistry and the biology and this the psychopharmacology of a human right the dopamine and adrenal and opioid uh, opi natural opioid uh and uh, serotonin flushes that occur with the infliction of that pain cause an altered state of psychology it causes an altered state of consciousness that allows you to tap into other aspects of your personality that allows you to easier access to some of those other uh, aspects of your personality oh fair enough non-binary no it, it it is there's there is that singular moment of experience where eternity exists, right? Eternity isn't forever. 
Eternity is that moment where everything else goes away. Past, present, future. It just, all of those constructs go away for a moment. That is eternity. Found it. Um, okay. That's a fucking comment. Um, so. <sighs> eventually, you know, the moment ends. You snap back to reality a little bit. But you're still there. You're still cruising that wave. And we got the box cleaned up. We got the stuff put back in. Um, we got everything packed back up. And he was like, you know, let's go back downstairs. So we go back downstairs. He leads me this time. Um, I had to bow as he, because he dropped the lead. He went full arm extension and he's two stairs in front of me. That means I have to prostrate, prostrate myself, right? I have to, I have to bend over at the waist to manage this position because you don't come up on the lead. That's just, that's just a fucking no, no, right? Like, don't, don't make your dom do that. So, you know, you're falling like that, basically falling back downstairs. We chill for a little bit on the, uh, on his seat. We relax. Um, and so at one point he, get, uh, we, we got to talking and he said, you know, he brought up the jock strap again. And I said, well, you know, I'm happily wear one, sir. Like, you know, he's like, oh, I've got a drawer full. He said, you don't, you don't need to wear, you don't need to bring any. He said, I'll, I'll assign you one whenever you come over. I'm like, really? He's like, yeah, let's go look. Back upstairs we go. You know, there's, there's time in between this. There's, you know, 15, 20 minutes in between these sorts of, you know, we back upstairs we go. And he fucking pulls out a drawer. Drawer full of fucking jock straps. Like, in package. Brand new. Like, these, these are not fucking used, like, anything. Like, this is, this is, like, legitimately, like, <sighs> holy shit. He's like, here. I, he's just literally like a fucking file folder. Hmm. I like this one. Put this one on. On it goes. It's kind of colorful. I liked it. You know, you do a little spin. You fucking, you present, you know, that's that sort of thing for inspection. And fucking, you know, do a little spin around. You, you know, you know, he's like, there's, you made the comment. Nothing makes a man's, man's ass look better than uh, a jock a properly fitted jock strap. He pulls out a rumble. He pulls out like 1970s basketball shorts, like the, the shorty shorts. Apparently Andrew Christian, that's the, that's the designer, right? Uh, released like a retro line. They are straight up those goofy fucking 1970s fucking shorty shorts. Like the, the, the weird fucking like weird pleated side and everything. Like it's not the straight cut. It's that weird pleated side and his, you know, they're white. Yeah. The silky white short shorty shorts. Right. And fucking he's like, put these on. So I put them on and I'm, I'm, I'm literally giggling because I've never worn these kind of shorts. Like these shorts, like these are a thing you see in fucking old, like fucking Harlem Globetrotter fucking footage and shit like that. Right. Like this is, I've never, I've never been up close to a pair of shorts like this. Right. Like it's like legitimately a blast from the past. And I put them on and I'm just giggling. I'm like, they're fucking hilarious. Yeah. Like VHS porn level. Yeah. Like they're, they're fucking, well, this is pre VHS. Um, curious they would have fit right at home with tubes, uh, striped tube stocks, uh, to striped tube socks. Yeah. Like straight up. Um, they're fucking hilarious. And of course he, he has to point out that, you know, eight millimeter porn level. Yeah. Gemma got it. Fucking Gemma down. Um, He's like, also, I just want to point out, he said, because of the way they're constructed, I have easy access. And he 
proved that he had easy access to both the front and the back, right? And he goes, but technically, I could take you to a bar or any other public location and you would be clothed. These would count. He's like, but any access that is required could be easily gotten. Like, okay, I see what's in my future. Got it. Um, yeah, like, I know where that's headed. Um, <clears throat> he pulls out a pair of navy blue gym shorts from like the early 80s, late 70s. Like the gym shorts, right? The ones our parents grew up wearing and shit like that, right? Like the, the, the ones of dads of old, those short, short gym shorts, no fancy pleating, no silky, like those weird cotton, dark blue, dark green, gray fucking gym shorts they used to assign back when dudes had to shower together and shit after gym, like that era of gym short, all right, pulls out a pair of those. And honestly, I'm like, now those are my style, right? The Andrew Christian retro thing, they're shiny white with some pleating and some fucking like blue piping on them and shit like that, right? I'm like, they're not really my style. They're adorable and hilarious, but they're not really my style. Old school fucking running short, gym short, fucking shorty short shit. Like the real deal pulls out a pair and he's like try these on at this point i drop the jock strap and the shorts because i want to put these on proper like right i want to feel what it feels like to wear a pair of these fucking shorts because i've seen these shorts but i've never worn a pair of shorts this short and i want to know what it's like right i fucking pull them up i look great in them i look fucking great in them <laughs> I fucking, I know that's like, you know, fucking holy shit. That's your first go-to. Yeah, no, I fucking, that's, I looked amazing in them. Like they, they accentuate the abdomen. They're fucking, they dude, they do everything for your legs. They fucking, that they make your thighs look amazing. They're a, why are we not wearing these shorts? Dudes, dudes, we need to bring these shorts back. We look great in them, right? Like every, every aspect of your physique that you're, you're, you're legitimately, these shorts are amazing. They fucking every every weekend that you want to like go out and party and look sexy and fucking hot like at the beach and shit. Fuck those board shorts. Fuck all that shit we've been wearing. Shorty short gym shorts from like the late 70s, early 80s. This is the shit we should be wearing. You're amazing. Your ass looks great. Your fucking thighs look great. It's it's they're, I'm telling you. Like the way they ride your fucking that cut on your abdomen, it, abdomen, if you have it, look, I'm fucking, there's only so much I can do for you. But if you do have the V cut on your abdomen, holy shit, man. Like I'm telling you, there was a revelation. I'm like, why the fuck did we get rid of these things? These things are amazing. I'm immediately doing like leg lifts and shit. I'm like doing like high knees to see like the, the, the mo m a mobility I have in them and shit. They're amazing. I was like, this, these are, these are great. Like how, why did we get rid of these as a society? Right. It was in that category of skirt for me. It was like, wait, how, who took these, who took these from us? These are brilliant. Right. And of course he, he says, you know, cause he starts to see me do the athletic sort of stuff. He's like, of course you'd probably want to wear a jock strap with it. And I just like blank faced him. He's like, okay, most people would probably want to wear a jock strap with him. I'm like, there you go. <laughs> right? Like, don't go ruining this. Don't go ruining this. <laughs> like, don't fuck this up for me. <laughs> like, oh, fuck you. Why would you do that? Um, these are great. Um, yeah, Kaiser, I'm telling you. Yeah. Like, have your, have your, your cat girl maid outfit and have your fucking like 80s gym shorts shit. 
right? I'm telling you. Some fucking tube socks, the 80s gym shorts, and a fucking real, like, sort of sort of like this, like a high-cut t-shirt, but that, like, ends at your abdomen. No length to it whatsoever. Make sure the t-shirt, like, ends right where the fucking shorts uh, start. I'm telling you. You'll be pulling it, man. You'll be pulling it. Um... So, yeah, he's, like, literally got me doing, like, a little sort of <laughs> master. You should wear a jock strap, Kai. At this point, I'm exercising consent boundaries. <laughs> red light, red light, red light. <laughs> hard limit, hard limit. Um, yeah, at this point, um, I have a pink Speedo. Uh, Le- Leco Brandon 46, welcome, by the way. I have one. Um, I also, I have a, um, a pink, a light pastel pink, um, thong as well. Um, so I'm doing a little like modeling show for him. Right. But still in the black leather collar with the lead attached and the, um, black, they're actually like black cuffs, but with a very dark blue stripe around them. Right. Um, so I'm in ankle and wrist cuffs a collar and a lead, but I'm also doing the seventies, eighties, shorty, short, gym, short modeling show for him. And <laughs> fair enough. Non-binary. Uh, yeah. Um, well that's the, that's the old school, um, method like that. That's, that's the old school method of, uh, maintaining like fuck safe word. It's green light. Keep, go for, Go more. Go, 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 go. Fucking yellow. Slow down there. And red. This shit is over. All right. That's that's the fucking old guard methodology. That way nobody's like everybody knows green, yellow and red light. Everybody knows that shit. So you don't have to worry about forgetting your your safe word. Um, So, yeah, it's old guard technique. And that's what he he uses. So, yeah. Red light. Red light. Right. Um. Still say that's the best form of safe word. Beastical, I mean, look, there's a reason the old guard used it. And, I mean, who the fuck am I to go against the old guard? Right? Will Xander, thank you for the biddies. Um, I mean, you know what? I always enjoy Will Xander's shit. So even in the middle of D-Gen story time, I'm doing it. Um, my uncle, Gorgory, uh, is always going on and on about that top broker, Peter Jime Sr. The guy closes deals. That's undeniable. He made a fortune, no doubt. But me uncle is completely enamored with Peter's meteorite collection. He's well known to have spent over 99% of his fortune on these meteorites because among top brokers, if you don't have an impressive meteorite collection, you're no different than the next bum on the streets. Isn't it so? 100% Will Alexander. Will Alexander just creates copy pasta. That's, I respect it. Um, so I don't need to remember pineapple pasta? No, yeah, exactly. And and also like <laughs> right. Um G Gen story time is my note taking time. Kaiser, if I can train up a new generation, by all means I will. Um yeah. So it is an extraordinary derail. Like Will Alexander puts work into it and I respect it. So like most people I would chide for derailing DJ and story time, but Will Alexander is fucking puts quality work out. So fuck it. I respect it. Um, so yeah, no, he's got me putting on a little fucking fashion show for him at this point. Um, and so I, you know, like I, I was digging the shorts right? I was digging the shorts. I'm like, these are, these are fucking, these are a revelation. Like these are great, great color. They're perfect in my, my color. I'm like, this is, this is, this is brilliant. I, I'm like, I'm, I'm like, I'm thinking like, how am I going to get these out the front door basically? Right? Like how, how, where, where, how do I steal these? <laughs> right? Like, hmm. <laughs> how do I get a hold of these? Um, cause I want this pair now, right? Like these are mine. Um, so, <laughs> nice Versa. Um, so he gets to about that time. He he. Um, could you imagine that copy pasta being your safe word? Jesus Christ! <laughs> oh, so it gets to about that time, and I mean, curious or I already did. I already did. Like they're technically they're they're mine. Um. So, 
he he looks at the time and he says, it's probably about time. He probably, you know, we need to start wrapping up here and get you out of here. Right. You got shit to do tonight. And you know, it's, he respects the schedule. Um, I'm like, okay, yes, sir. And I just sort of instinctively reach for the, 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 the waistband. And he looks at me and goes, I didn't tell you to take it off. I'm like, there I go. Fucking thinking for myself again. Dummy. Fucking dummy. Um, sorry, sir. Snatches the leash, yanks me in a little bit, and just gets in the personal space this time, right? Like this is this is just a power move. Right? This is just I'm in your space, right? Like this is your space doesn't exist anymore because your space belongs to me. Right? Like that's that's just this is this is just claiming territory at this point, right? Straight, straight up imperialism, um, but yeah, just yanks me in and sort of occupies the space and just sort of intense, right? It's just an intense moment of just like you know what this is about. Cool, you know, you just basically what I choose to do. And what I find with works with most doms, unless instructed otherwise, you don't look them dead in the eyes. You look them right in about the, the Adam's apple or like mid chest, right? So like a section right about here. This is where your gaze goes, right? And you just soften your gaze. It's not a hard look. You just sort of unfocus your eyes a little bit and you just right there and you stand at attention and you just let it be. You just exist. That's what you do because that's all you can do and all you should be doing. Unless you are told otherwise, unless you were, you know, made to do otherwise, you should not be looking them straight in the eyes. That's, you know, a challenge shit that's, you know, you just sort of. For as long as it takes. Um, and, you know, we I don't know how long he held that. 30 seconds, a minute and a half. Fuck if I know. Time is fluid in that space. Um, but he eventually is like, okay, you can take them off now. And, you know, so we've got the pile of fucking jock strap and shorty shorts and shit like that. And he's, he's you know, he's, he's like, I washed them. Trust me. Like, I will wash them. All right. So, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm holding them at presentation sort of like that. Right. Like, I've got them sort of folded up and bound up and, you know, but I'm, I'm also holding them at presentation because I don't know if he wants them directly. I don't know if I'm going to carry them downstairs. But, you know, you, that's his decision to make, not mine. So... He, you know, he's like, okay, let's go downstairs. And he, you know, leads me down and again. You know, you gotta, you gotta prostrate just to fucking get down there. And, um, and so, yeah, like lead back down the stairs and around. And he says, you know, it, cause he's got these top windows, right? He's like, I always wonder if the neighbors, if they were just at the right position at the right time, could they see in and what would they see? And, you know, he's pondering to himself. It's not, this isn't, you know, this isn't participation time, kids, right? This is just, this is your dom, like, this is talking to himself. And as you know damn well what they'd see, they'd see you fucking, you know, they'd see a, this guy leading this younger guy, buck-ass naked except for like fetish gear by a, like a collar and chain prostrated down in stairs. Like that's what they'd fucking see is fucking, you know, so, you know, damn well what they'd see he just, you know, he's pondering to himself. And so, you know, Oh, um, on the way, on the way we swung by the, um, uh, the, the playroom and he picked the trash out and he, you know, he, to, to me, um, and so, you know, you know what to do. He's, he's grabbing the other, the other, um, underliner from the seat. And so he's, he's binding that up and, you know, if you fucking hold the trash at extension so he can put the stuff in the trash. And so he comes back and, you know, we're down the doc walk downstairs and he said, you can put that in the trash and, you know, hand him the, he's like, give me the clothes. So he takes the clothes and, you know, he dropped the lead and then 
went to the laundry room, took the clothes and that sort of thing. And then he comes back out, grabs the lead and pulls out to the, on uh, the, the living room. And he says, all right, I suppose you can, you can start taking that stuff off. Now here's the deal. These and the ankles you can take off. Unless you are explicitly told. And you may even want to double check. Unless you are explicitly told, that collar is never yours to take off. When he said you can take that stuff off, I promise you that was a subtle test. I promise you that was a test. Because that collar is not mine to take off. I know that. I know that through and through. So wrists, ankles, right? Like I can't, you know, I can't get it really on the right wrist, but I can get it off, right? That's just a yank and a fucking release, right? That's no big deal. Get that off. You present them and then you sort of present yourself. And, you know, you turn around and then it's for him to undo. Yeah, so now he knows I know that. Yeah, got it. Exactly. He knows. I know. Right? Like, I know that lesson. I I'm a fucking rookie. I know the deal with that. Um, Present, and he, he takes it off. And I will tell you right now, it doesn't feel good coming off. It doesn't. There's, there's, there's a part of you, like as a sub, that you're just like, hmm. Right, you're sad it comes off, right? Um, there's the people that wear theirs 24-7 and props to them. Props to them. If you fucking rock that collar 24-7 in a full ownership scenario, um, mad props. But I don't, homie don't play like that. Dude, the world's fucking weird as shit and I don't have the aesthetic for it, right? Um, Uh, so many unspoken rules. I would fail at this so hard. My, uh, my BBD wouldn't allow it. Uh, curious or same, uh, Viva, you kind of do, you kind of do. It's, it's a weird, it's a weird thing that uh, there is a, there's an altered state of consciousness attached to the wearing of that device. It, it is, it is oddly like a mind control device. In a very odd way. Like most people could put on a fucking collar and it'd just be a thing, right? Like you'd just be like, and now there's this fucking thing on my neck, no big deal. Um, and you'd be, you know, it'd just be an aesthetic. But if you're into it, if you've put in the work and the time and you've, you've manipulated your psychology... then there's a lot to that thing. There's a lot to that thing. And so, yeah, it is kind of a, you, you change when you put it on and you change when you take it off, when it's taken off you, right? You change when it's put on you and you change when it's taken off of you. It is, it is, it is sort of a moment. Um, so we, you know, He goes in for a hug. And I'm expecting a hug because, as I've said before, two hard rules, right? Naked when you come in, hug on the way out. And he went in for a second kiss. And he could see my hesitancy. And he said, does it make you uncomfortable? Yeah. Yes, sir. It does. He said, good. And he did it anyway. Right? Like it was, it was fucking work. I didn't like it. I still don't like it. I still don't like it. I don't like anything about it. I don't like anything that symbolizes. I don't like anything that's attached to it. I don't, I don't like it. But he saw that it made me uncomfortable and he got off on that. It was just another form of domination for him and it clicked. 
it clicked that he had been reading me that well already that he, he saw it made me uncomfortable. So I did it anyway. I was like, oof, you're a different kind of sadist. All right. All right. I'm starting to get a read on you too then, motherfucker. <laughs> right? Like I'm, I, I, I get it. I get it. All right. So for those of you who are like, he's getting squishy. Oh, he may fall for you. Welcome back to reality. This motherfucker's a dom. All right. And he's old guard. He's good at what he does. So much as I can read him, he can pretty much reciprocally read me. So I'm sort of like, it's sort of like two master swordsmen. You know, the length of the sword is effectively a, a solid wall. And we're just waiting for somebody to like make a, make a distinct move so somebody else can, you know, move and leverage, right? Sort of that. It really is. Um, because underneath it all is a very interesting power dynamic between a sub and dom. A dom who wants the power, who craves being in charge, but knows in their heart of hearts that they never will be because the sub holds all the power. It's a very interesting dynamic at play. And for those of us who are anarchists, for those of us who specialize in things like Foucaultian power dynamic analysis, this is a microcosmic exercise in exploring and understanding those interpersonal power dynamics intimately to a degree that most people never will. <sighs> DGEN story time, everyone. I hope you enjoyed. Now tell me none of that was recording because I'm not getting a, I'm not getting a make echoes stop. So I may have to trim that out myself. We'll see. Because that was a good one. That was a good one. But... I don't think it started. Uh, so somebody, let's see. What is that? Let me get um, one hour, 44 minutes, 36 seconds. Let me get a, a, a time marker on that. Just, 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 just in case. Just in case because uh, one hour, four, four minutes. Just in case I have to do it by hand. Um, uh, Watkins, these are current. The story I just told you happened earlier tonight. We haven't been in public yet. You're getting this pretty much live. Um, all right. Beastical. See, that's why you're a pro. You managed to get that all back into theory. Beastical. I'm fucking ruthless. Oh. Oh. My inner my internet went out. I had to race to my phone. Um, you're welcome, Cricks. Um, 
Most people are afraid to test their limits or get their limits tested. Astral. Yeah. Um, it was at the GP with no headphones listening. <laughs> joke it i love you for that holy damn i had to leave but i couldn't maniac thank you um uh j miles i i i would i would like to hope so um i want more well chris we uh at watkins we we've started a playlist um there's there's a bunch of them but we need to, we literally like we got to go back and fucking figure out find them zippy said that she may do it and then i'll trim them out like if somebody gets me time codes for all of the dgen story times or at least a significant portion of them i will trim them out and put them we're starting a playlist um <laughs> nice cricks uh, I thought this was li like years ago. Oh my God. No, this, this, this happened hours ago. Watkins. This happened hours ago. Thank you. Curious sir. I'm um, sorry. I forgot you were hurt. I hadn't, I uh, wouldn't have done this swishy swish. It's okay. Maniac. It's okay. I need to get up and move around. Um, I've just started started a sub dom relationship, but we're both novices, really. I know more than him. I'm a sub. Choken. Years of experience. I fucking hate inexperienced doms. I know everybody starts somewhere, but here's 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 my true belief. This is my true belief. There's exceptions. There's there's plenty of exceptions, right? But here's my true belief. Most of the best doms used to be subs. There are exceptions, and I have one right now. But the majority of them need to learn it from the other side. It, it's it, it, Most of them need to learn it from the side of the sub. They make the best doms. Or some of the best doms, frankly. Um, an inexperienced dom. I was sexually, very sexually repressed as a teen. And now I'm just exploring all this. Um, I, I've i thought about this. Kind of like needing to be a worker before you become a boss. I mean, to a certain extent, yeah. I, I don't like that, that comparison just as an anarchist. But, um, yeah, you got to learn the business from the ground floor, right? Yeah. Um, so most doms are just post subs. A lot. A lot are. Yeah. A lot of them are. Um, I have thought about it. I've thought about it. I'd make an amazing dom. But I don't know if it would satisfy anything in me. If there's... If ever there comes a moment that I, I truly feel myself wanting to explore it and to seek that out and that I feel that there's a gap in my experience and I want to fill it in, then, yeah, I'll do it. I'd make an amazing Dom. Um, but I don't want to be, right? Like... doesn't do it for me right like that th 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 there's 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 a reason that I was the best moment of the night was literally me all fucking cuffed up and collared just getting paper towels and all-purpose cleaner from a, a cabinet Right, like that, that was the singular moment of the night for me. There's a reason that that, you know, I just haven't hit post sub levels yet. Fuck it, yeah. Post submissiveness. Oh, and the rope. Yeah, I mean, the rope, the rope, the rope. I mean, look, you know, I will forever be a climber. 
you know, but no, like it's, it, it, it scratches a portion of my brain that otherwise I don't get scratched. Right. Like I, I, I've been a dominant personality plenty of times in my life. Um, <laughs> Watkins. Um, oh, Gemma. Enjoy your meeting, though. You're fucking affecting change in your environment, Gemma. Not only should you be proud, you should be happy to do it. So have fun doing it. Um, that's the, exactly. It's all you can do, Gemma. It's all you can do. Good luck. Um, yeah, if I ever, if I ever find myself wanting to do it, I know what to do. Um, yeah, I know the psychology. I know how to, you know, work people. Um, oh, civic. Well, I mean, if he can't do it for himself, Doing it for somebody he loves and cares about, it's a solid second place. It's a solid second place. You know, there's no lack of honor or respect in that. So, um, I'm glad it fucking happened. I'm glad he's over that hurdle. There's many more hurdles to clear. There's so many more hurdles to clear. But, if all goes well, you know, if all goes as expected, in the end, he'll look back and, holy shit, man, you know, hundreds of pounds potentially lost, a new life gained. It'll be worth it. I need to go see a dermatologist for the acne I have, but I'm poor and a bit embarrassed. Any advice? Um, how broke exactly are you, Watkins? Because you can get like retinol and hyaluronic acid and these sorts of things over the counter. Like a lot of the treatments that they would do for acne. Again, hashtag, I am not a doctor. This does not constitute medical advice in no way, shape, or form. Am I, uh, uh, am I prescribing medical advice in any way? All I am doing is speaking as an, an, uh, a fellow human of the world and with things that I may or may not have a modicum of experience with. Pretty much no money left until I get back to college job in the spring. Mm. Wash your face regularly, but the fact of the matter is it's not going to do anything. It's not going to do anything. Um, if you have like pretty advanced acne, that's either or hormonal and or, you know, of a dermatological, actual derm dermatological condition nature, right? Like it's this, I could tell you to wash your fucking face 19 times a day. It's going to do very little to help you. Um, so you need product. Um, it goes down when I take good care of it, which is good. Yeah, you, you need to stay on top of it, but it, it needs product more than anything else. Um, yeah, plenty of water. Stay off, the uh, stay off the sugars. Maniac, thank you. Thank you for... Uh, look, I, I, one of the few things I actually like being is a, is a halfway decent storyteller. I like I, I I find honor in the the orator and storyteller tradition and the fact that you needed to go walk it, uh, uh not walk this but maniac and I held you. I take I, I take a, a great deal of pride in that. So thanks for hanging out, maniac. Have a good rest of your night, man. Um. So. Ah, thank you again, Maniac. So, yeah, you need, you need like, fucking product. But the fact of the matter is, is that, um, yeah, like, water, stay off the fucking, um, stay off the refined sugars. Refined sugars, fatty, greasy foods, um, and the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, uh, Watkins, how old are you? Because are, are you one of the young ones? Because also acne is hormonally related. And when testosterone surges, it's a whole thing. Yeah. Okay. 
you're fu- you're fucked. You're fucked. You're fucked. You're 19. You're at like you're just just past peak testosterone. You're just past peak, peak testosterone, right? Like this is the deal. Testosterone causes acne flares, right? Like it causes acne flares. It, it, it's, it literally does this. Like uh, uh, bodybuilders who do cycles get back knee like a motherfucker, right? Like they just break out. It's, it's just one of those things. It's hormonally related as well. So you, yeah, you drink plenty of water, stay away from fr- refined sugars, stay away from fi- uh, fried foods, uh, plenty of greens, get plenty of uh, quality sleep if you can. Um, but at the end of the day, know that like, Welcome to biology. Yeah. Um, you're good. You're going to need something like hyaluronic acid and or retinol to, uh, to cause, um, oh yeah. Stay away from heavy moisture. You need to like dry some of that shit out. Um, well, I explained some of it. I love myself some fried food and I sleep horribly. Yeah. You knock that the fuck off Watkins. Um, walk, knock that the fuck off. Um, Yeah. So, and don't pick at it. If you've got like cystic acne, don't, don't fucking pick at it. Like you you just don't, uh, you'll end up with scarring that you'll just regret. Uh, Oh God, I remember the horror of my greasy face at 16. Um, okay, so Mayo Clinic. Um, okay, here are... This is literally the Mayo Clinic speaking on acne, all right? This is, this is not my recommendation. This is literally the Mayo Clinic speaking on acne. Here are the four things, all right, that are the major like common ingredients that work in over the counter acne products. All right. Benzoyl, uh, benzoyl peroxide. That'll kill the bacteria, right? It helps remove some of the excess oil, but it, it kills the, the bacteria, right? Um, but it could cause dry skin, scaling, redness, burning, and stinging. If you have sensitive skin. All right, so benzyl peroxide, number one. Salicylic acid, that'll help the pores for, uh, prevent uh, being plugged. Again, may cause skin irritation. Alpha hydroxy acids, um, that, will, um, that will help remove the dead skin cells and reduce inflammation, so reduce the overall redness and helps improve the, uh, improve the appearance of scars and give the impression of smaller pores. And sulfur. Sulfur will help remove the dead skin cells and, cl- uh, and help remove the excess oil. These, this is literally according to the, the Mayo Clinic, the four things that are in common over-the-counter treatments that you may actually use. Thank you for those follows, uh, Morello and um, Brooklyn Rob. Anyway, so yeah, Watkins, you can find those sorts of things cheaply. I mean, not super cheap. But you can find those things cheaply and a lot cheaper than a fucking dermatologist visit. That I can tell you that much. Um, God, it still annoys me that fucking clip didn't didn't actually take. I, c- I pushed that fucking button. I know I pushed that button. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, Watkins, they're all topicals. Those are all topicals. Um... Oh, yeah, you know what? Fuck it. (sighs) That's rough, Watkins. My best friend, um, who I still consider a sister from fucking high school, um, had really terrible acne. She, she got fucking hit over the head with it, right? Like that, 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 that sort of the, the pocking that happens on the cheeks and just like scarring is fucking rough. Like, I mean, you know, blessed hashtag blessed y'all, right? Like it's, it's probably stress, bad diet and a lack of sleep, which is a a stress to unto itself. Watkins, um, it's stress. 
That's your your physiological reaction to stress, probably. You're 19. You're dealing with fucking. You're you're dealing with the um, college shit now too, right, Watkins? Yeah, college college job. So you literally. Oh yeah, fucking uh, Morello. I fucking I don't do dairy. So, like you know, yeah. Um. So yeah, college. It's dude, you're dealing with hormones, college, stress, bad diet, bad sleep. You're fucking basically you're you're basically hitting the the the, the perfect quadfecta of uh, of um, contributors to acne flares. So congratulations, Watkins. And uh, Goddard, thank you for the follow, by the way. Um, yeah. Like, that's just, dude, try and get better sleep. Try and not to eat as much fatty, fucking greasy-ass food. Don't drink soda. Just don't drink soda. Don't do that. Um, if that's, that's a habit, by the way, if that's a habit, like, any of y'all can kick at any fucking age, just do it the sooner you can. That shit is fucking poison. I thought being a teenager during the Iraq war post 9-11 was a disillusionment with the com competency of people in power. I can't imagine being a teenager during COVID, Trump, and all the QAnon Facebook crap. Well, uh, Chew Toy, I mean, you left out one really important thing there for, like, the, the, the Gen Zers at present, Chew Toy. Climate. Right? Imagine, imagine staring down the next, like, 60 years of your life. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm, 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 I would, I would give you anything to wake up eight, 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 like 16 or 18 tomorrow. Right? Right? I'd give you anything. What do you want? Like, I'd, I'd give you anything. But I tell you right now, if I woke, woke up 16 or 18 tomorrow, after I, I get over my degeneracy, right? Like, I'm going to, I'm going to have a fucking week, right? Like I've already said what I would do if I woke up 18 tomorrow. Like it, it shit gets, gets fucking freaky for a, for a minute. Right. And this is me speaking, right? Shit would get freaky. But after I get over that hurdle, oh yeah, the climate stuff, we're getting real about that bitch, right? We're getting real about that. <laughs> like, oh, fuck around and find out. Think I want to fucking deal with this shit? Yeah. I mean, I don't, Astral. Um. Imagine being old in bad climate. You know what? Cash out early, Astral. Cash out early. Fucking. What? No sense sticking around for it. Uh, above, above, above. I also have really bad body dysmorphia. I can't look at myself without feeling grotesque. The acne doesn't help that problem. Oh, Watkins, I'm sorry. I don't, like, look, that. <sighs> I feel really bad, right? Like, I feel huge amounts of sympathy and empathy for, like, people who... I'm going to say this with his, like, I can get off to me, right? Like, this is, I mean, I'm a gay dude, right? Like, so it helps. But, like, right? Like, I like the way I look. I like how I look naked, right? Like, that's a huge fucking gift, right? That's a huge fucking gift. Right? Like, that's... That's that's a huge fucking gift. And I don't take it for granted. Right? Like I I didn't I didn't know that I was decent looking most of like my middle and high school career, right? I moved to Vegas and I hit the gay scene and then it clicked. And it was like, "Oh. All right. I have a I have a thing, right? Like I have a draw." Okay. I got it. 
and I never look back, right? I take it, I don't take it for granted. It's, 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 it is a fucking gift to be in a social group, be in a subculture, be in a, a group of people and be considered physically attractive by the others, right? Like that's a huge boon. It makes things easier. It makes life easier. It makes your self-esteem so much. It just boosts everything. And I, I, I truly don't take that for granted. And I, I have great amounts of sympathy for anybody who either is on the other side of that coin or feels they are on the other side of that coin. Because frankly, having spent enough time in the gay scene over the years, there is a body type for everybody. And there is a person for every body type. I truly, I truly don't like, I don't doubt that for a second. I have, I have seen dudes that like legitimately, like the bear scene alone mystifies me, but dudes go crazy for it. Dudes go crazy for it. Right. And that's just, there is, there is a body type for everyone. And there is a per, uh, and there is a person for every body type. I truly believe that at this point in my life. So Yeah. But when you feel that way, when when you have that experience, when you you know whether whether it is true or not, whether you know if you're experiencing it, it's as true as it's ever going to be for you. And that's that's just that's fucking rough. It's fucking rough. I thought I was ugly. I was a ballet dancer, too skinny compared to the gym bunnies. Turns out they loved bottom twinks. Yeah, Civic, like, um. Oh, chew toy. Peter Roth, uh, Peter Thomas Roth sulfur mask. It's in Sephora, but like I said, it's a pretty penny. Small jar for 52. Oof, yeah. Um, to be fair, beauty standards are not kind to people of color, so my childhood was rough. Watkins. I'm going to ask. What? What type of, what type of person of color? There's no, there's no like easy way to ask this question. Are you Hispanic? Are you black? Are you like, what, what standards just so I can fix it in my head, right? Like what, what were the standards that were set for you? Um, hell is going to be hot for you, my guy. Peace out. Also, you don't have a thing. You look like a hog's ass sewed up with a grapevine. Uh, I don't, I, what does that even mean? African and Italian. What does that even mean? Does anybody fucking know what that means? Fucking a hog's ass sewed up with a grapevine. How does that even? Okay. All right. African and Italian. Um, yeah, that was almost Kavasa level diss, right? Like fucking... Um, sounds kinky. I like grapevine. Um, yeah. No. Sorry you suffered through that, Watkins. I, I, I'm not one of those that gets better people. I hate that shit. I truly do. I hate that shit. I hate that fucking campaign. I hate that entire con. He gets better. You know what? Sometimes it doesn't. And I hate creating those false expectations for especially kids, right? Like sometimes life just sucks, right? Like that's just, that's just, just be honest about it and be truthful about it. But I, I, you know, it sucks, man. Sorry you're going through that. Sorry you've had to go through it. And I'm sorry you continue to go through it. But, um, <laughs> um, I do agree that I uh, agree with that chew toy a good part of attractiveness is mo is moving confidently and deliberately being in control of your body is appealing to many I think I, I do agree I got the hair reminiscent of African ancestry but the skin tone of Italian walk-ins Okay, so here's here's the thing, Watkins. When you describe that to me, the first thing that fucking popped into my head was that's sexy as fuck, man. I don't know what you're on about. 
Yeah, right? Like that's dude, like that 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 immediately appealed to me. That immediately appealed to me. I was like fucking <laughs> like badass fucking hair and fucking skin of bronze, right? Like dude, I I I Yeah. Bro. It's like Greek god status. I know, right? Like, that's the first thing that popped in my head. I was like, motherfucker. Like, god damn. <laughs> uh, Michelangelo's David looking motherfucker. Um, sadly, uh, this motherfucker right here. All right. So it is straight body dysmorphia. I'm sorry about that, Watkins. That sucks. While I know other people see me as handsome, it doesn't click for me. That's the shitty part. I still feel I still feel really disgusting. You need therapy, man. You need meds and therapy. Yeah. They ain't fucking ain't no shame in it. And I know you're a broke-ass college student right now, right? You can't be doing shit about it, probably. But did your campus, did your college have, um, does have, a, a, does it have access to therapy for, for students? Most colleges do. Most modern universities and colleges do. Um... Hey, a few mother, uh, a few of you, um, go, go welcome fucking Alex G over on the discord server. I don't know. He just, he just said, he actually introduced himself. I don't know who it is, but fucking somebody just say, somebody be nice and say hi to Alex. Um, again, it does. It used to for a while. It isn't available when you're off campus. Watkins, avail yourself of it when you're back on campus. If you, if you get back on campus, fucking avail yourself of it. Cause man, that's, that's your only option on this one. Um, yeah, like you just need therapy, man. And maybe meds, but therapy start there. I'm six foot two blonde. Best I can ever look like is a Nazi lumberjack Two toy. Also hot. Um, I've literally had far writers assume I'm some neo-Nazi dirtbag because of my looks. They rapidly learned otherwise. Thankfully not common. Um, yeah, chew toy. I, I am like, all right, let's do this. Um, man. Yeah. Watkins. That's, that's the only thing I can say to you, man, is you, you, you need to sit down with a professional and talk it out. <sighs> see, see Che on this one. It's it's rough, man. It's fucking rough out there. And and as whoever pointed out, I think it was like Crystal or someone. Who the fuck pointed this shit out? Um, oh, it was it was Cupcake, of course. Fucking when I said you know like the fucking it gets better shit. Cupcake's like yeah, and we live under capitalism, and say it ain't gonna get better. <laughs> fucking Cupcake with a straight up doomer. Oh, Watkins. Oh, you're fucking breaking my heart here, man. I played soccer too. That's why I just, you know, I'm fucking like, I'm, I'm there with you, man. Like I could see it. And that description looking like a tall glass of sun tea, right? Like I, I lived in the deep South. I fucking know what a tall glass of sun tea looks like. Even like you, your descriptors were perfect and I could see it and man. That's rough. Uh, what is Fetterman? I mean, the only Fetterman I know about is the Fetterman massacre. Um, uh, bunch of indigenous tribes. I don't know. Uh, Lakota and... The Lakota and the Arapaho fought some fucking U.S. military. It's off the top of my head. Like we, it's like a, I don't know what we call it, a detachment maybe um, of U.S. military. That's the only Fetterman I know of. Um, that and like, I don't know. 
Oh, um, fucking, yeah, 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 Pennsylvania, right? Fucking the governor of Pennsylvania, Fetterman. Big John Fetterman, the PA governor, yeah. The way he abstracted it to what is Fetterman, that's the fucking where my brain went. Not to a person, but to an incident. Um, I remember for picture day, I tried to dress up nice and ended up throwing away nearly two dozen outfits and eventually going in a hoodie. Hoodies and flannel pants are the only thing I can wear now without having to avoid mirrors. You need to talk to somebody, man. You need to talk to a pro. Yeah. You need to talk to somebody with training and... Um, yeah. There's, I mean, I, you know, we can provide you support. We can provide you care and love and sympathy and empathy and compassion. But at the end of the day, you got some shit going on. Oh, he's anything but astral. Yeah, but is anything but. Yeah, like, yeah, fucking Fetterman's anything but that. But yeah, Watkins, like, at the end of the day, you you need to, you need to see a professional, man. You need to have somebody help you sort that out. Um... Who Cassidy posted it? Angry asexual lesbian. Someone sees my short nails. So are you gay or anxious? Yeah. Oh, cause the lesbian, the short nails. I was like, what does the fucking short nails have to do? To that that that. Right. It's been a long. My life is literally a creek tragedy. Oh, wait, since we were going through my life story, guess what? At the end of my senior year, my vehicle flipped over three times into a ditch, and I fractured bones in my back like a motherfucker. No more soccer and exercise for me. My life is literally a creek tragedy, bro. What? You need to PT the fuck out of that back, man. Look, you're still young. Yeah, you, you're going to have intractable pain, probably. I ain't going to blow smoke up your ass. Shit's going to be rough, especially the older you get. You're looking at arthritis and all sorts of shit. But you're still young. You need to PT the shit out of that. Like, even if it hurts, like, you need to fucking... You need a physical therapy the fuck out of that injury. Um, all right. I want to get this last. I, well, I know I do. Yeah. Like that's how long is this? 2.6. I want to do 2.6 tonight. I see. This is the thing. Like. Yeah, you Watkins, you need you need fucking therapy and, and, and meds. Like I love you, man, but you, that's what you need. I can't. There's nothing I can do but sit here and say, "Fuck, man, I'm, that sucks. I'm sorry. I, I I have compassion for, but yeah, you need to sit down with a pro, and you need to get some meds probably. But, um, I. I want to get this 2.6 section done in this reading. So we're going to do some theory. Um, <laughs> we're a mess, bro. Yeah. Yeah, everybody in our own little way. And as a species, we're just a mess, bro. Um, especially in America, uh, your family are being assholes, so they won't help. All right. Your family are being assholes. I'm about to say some fucking non PC shit. I'm about to say some non PC shit. Especially the fact that you have like African and Italian heritage coming at them with like body dysmorphia those are two cultural groups two cultural identities that don't necessarily understand that sort of psychological illness yeah like if you had some like middle class fucking white family they'd be all over that shit they'd be all over that shit they'd have you in a fucking therapy in a heartbeat but 
African and an Italian. Oof. Yeah. They ain't buying that. That's some fucking made up shit. Suck it up. Try harder. You just need to buckle down. You need to work hard. <laughs> yep. That's fucking rough, bro. Hey, Ramsey. And hey, there's Artos. They keep saying how they were able to make it when it was harder than me. Uh, it was harder than me. It's like, well, I can't. Oh, fuck it. That breaks my heart. Just you, you, just the way you phrased that, Watkins, that breaks my fucking heart. It's like, mom, I can't. Yep, caboose. I, I saw that coming a mile. When he's when he's when he said his family was you know non-supportive, it's like, yeah, yeah. Like that's that's cultural normative values. Look, middle class white families have a lot of fucking problems. Don't get me wrong. That MLK shit is spot on. Middle class white families got a lot of fucking problems and can contribute to a lot of fucking problems. But if their kids got an issue like that, they'll fucking get it sorted. They believe in that sort of stuff. And that's a good thing, right? Yeah, sure. Maybe they go overboard with it sometimes, but I'd rather they go overboard with it than fucking deny that their children can have psychological trauma and disability and issue and just fucking like you know get it addressed i'd, I'd much rather have it, 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 it a possibility of an outcome than just some made up white people shit right i don't i don't like that Uh, if I was just able to flip a switch and try harder, I wouldn't have done this shit already. Um, hmm, fair enough. That's it's true, true toy. I get that. It just breaks my heart that she loves me so much, but doesn't even know the real parts about me. Sometimes I think she loves the sun. She believes I am not the one I am. Watkins. Look, I don't know you. I don't know your mom. I don't know your family. I don't know your relationship. I don't know your dynamic. I'm just going to say some real shit off the top of my head. You know what? That's a, that's most parents. That's most parents. Like, like that's just the human condition. That's the human condition, man. That's that's some post-structuralist shit. I mean, I hate to, like, wrap this around and fucking make a talking point out of it, but that's some post-structuralist shit, right? Like, that's that's how can we know one another's actual condition? How can we actually know the inside of somebody else's head? And in fact, you really can't sometimes. And so you build these constructs of people. And if the actual reality of the person doesn't align or overlap with the construct, oftentimes people will negate the person and not the construct. Because the construct is real to them. It's in their head. You're out there. You're a foreign entity. That's just fucking sometimes how humans work. And it's just tragic as shit when it happens between parents and children. Hope it isn't the case. But... Parents' expectations for their children. Um, a lot of horrid, horrid shit has come up in our in our world because of parents' expectations for their children. <sighs> Rough man. Oh Watkins man. You need a hug. Where the fuck are you, Watkins? We need to fucking we need to field deploy someone just to give you a hug. Till I grew up now, uh, psychology uh, psychologically uh, didn't exist on psychological didn't exist on a spectrum. You're either normal or insane. Yep, grew up in a conservative for New Zealand. Think Democrat, roughly household, and is the only family lefty. Oh boy, getting through is rough. Um, everybody, need, every uh, most people need more hugs. Most people need more hugs. We know that. That's a thing. Most people need more hugs. Most people are actually lacking the appropriate amount of physical contact that a human being physiologically expects. Right? Like, that. It's, yeah, most people need more hugs. Um, <laughs> I 
Are you touch adverse, Caboose? That's one of those things that people always suspect I'm like slightly on spectrum. The eye contact and the don't fucking touch me. Yeah. Like I I I I got over I got over the the sort of the touch thing because one of my buddies is a hugger. And it just Yeah, I don't I, I my eyes will be all over the place. I I work the room. Um but yeah, one of my buddies is a hugger and you're like a fucking hugger, right? Like not just, uh, you know, fucking bring it in, man. Fucking, yeah, man. Let's show some fucking love, right? I resisted that shit for years. Um, and he, he wore me down. He wore me down. And it's just like, you know what? And like, but eventually I understood it and eventually it clicked. Eventually it wasn't work anymore and it was... Oh shit, you know. Yeah, fuck you, Make Echoes. I fucking pushed the goddamn button for you to record and you didn't fucking record. Now I got extra work to do because your fucking shit didn't queue off. Um anyway, um now it's 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 like uh, give me a give me a fucking hug, man, right? Like uh, now I get it. It clicked. But for many, many years it was don't touch guy. Don't don't fucking touch me. Um Hugs, high fives, pats on the back, hand on the shoulder, hate it. Yeah, now now I'm fine. Now like, dude, if you're if you're into it, like I'll fucking I'll sit on the couch and throw my legs over you and shit. Right? Like I don't care. Right? Like I'm I'm I that dude fucking broke that part of my brain. Right? Like shout out Otis. Right? Otis fixed that shit. Like straight up, whatever part of me, whatever weird upbringing, whatever, like I, mean, I grew up on a fucking mountain. My parents were constantly like not there. I was just wandering the wilderness like a feral fucking entity. I'm sure that had something to do with it. But like Otis fixed that shit. He just fucking broke that part of my personality. And now it's like, you know, I'm, I'm like, I'm kind of touchy feely sometimes. Um... Zartos, yeah, hugs are the shit. I was that friend guy. Nice, Zartos. Um, I used to have horrid eye contact, but I've been riddled in prescriptions. Um, I, you know, yeah, I, I still don't. I don't like looking people in the eye for very long. It makes me uncomfortable. It does. It's like, mm, I feel like animalistic. It feels like a challenge to me. Um, I can do touch, but the capacity for hugging is much lower than others. So, like, uh, so it's like I burn out on it faster than most. Interesting. Um, I started to get help with 30, but most damage is already done. Viva? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, everybody be having all these problems. Meanwhile, my only problem is that I'm fat. <laughs> Our toes. Um, fucking goofball. Yeah. Yeah, it just looks like a normal goofball kid. Um. Eye contact is a distraction for me. I have to look away from other things during long conversations or I can't even think. Cupcake, I may be in that camp. It's like sort of just like, you know, I'm doing other shit, right? Like I, I will carry the conversation with you. Don't worry. I just won't look in your eyes. Like I'll, I'll glance up to make sure you're paying attention from time to time. But otherwise, I'll be looking around. It's just how I've, I've always operated that way. Like I said, don't know. Um, Zartos. Zartos. Just lose weight, man. You're still fucking young, too. Zartos, you're, you're, you're. Oh, yeah. Cab Caboose wants to see you now, Watkins. If you're okay with it, of course. Caboose straight up said, if you're okay with it, like. I know that may trigger some shit for you. So don't, don't ever do anything that makes you uncomfortable. Um, yeah, it's like Zartos, just fucking lose it, man. <laughs> I know you. You're perfectly fucking healthy. Watkins. Watkins, can I make this decision for you? Just, just pick the first one. Don't, don't scroll through, man. Don't scroll through. Stop looking. Stop looking. Just pick one. Just pick the first one. Pick the first one. Just pick it. Don't, don't think about it. Nobody here will judge you like that one. That way. We, nobody is going to judge you the same way you judge yourself. I promise you that. You are going to judge yourself so much more harshly than the entire fucking uh, community will. Just pick it. 
Done. <laughs> I think you look great. I think you look like a... Also, also, I think you look... Dude, I would happily hang the fuck out with you. You look like an amazing dude. Like, you got personality written over, over, all over you in spades. You're perfectly fine looking. You're handsome. Like, I don't know what your deal... Like, but I know what your deal is, right? Like, I get it. It's not... It's not as simple as you just need some person to give you an affirmation from an external perspective. I get that. There's nothing I can say that will change that. That's going to take work. So I hope you get somebody who will be able to do the work with you. Zara says, damn it, don't spill my secrets, guy. Unless it's naked, then pick another. You are your own worst critic equals always true. Yep. Yep. All it took was crying when I sent it. Fuckins. Oh, Mad fucking virtual hugs, man. Civic, I prefer handshake or conversation where we don't need to needlessly acknowledge our existence. If we're having a conversation, we're already past the first stage. The rest is whether or not you prefer poppers over Crisco for fist. <laughs> um, Civic, I'm for both. Crisco and poppers. So can we hang, Civic? Um... Only time I've ever had an issue with eye contact are those people that try to force a moment with intense eye contact. It's like that activates something to me. It's like pulling a fire alarm in my brain. Caboose. Yeah, those people are just trying to pull some like domination shit on you. It's like, ah, fuck you. Um, the, yeah, everybody's like, dude, you you look dope as fuck, man. You look dope as fuck. Um, I totally feel Watkins over there too. My family to this day are the opposite of supportive. The point of no return was passed a very long time ago on them. Uh, ever wanting to try to understand or know me rather than accepting me to be what they think I should be. Um, and them all being hardcore alt-right libertarian bigots and the lifetime of mental abuse because of it all is rough. <sighs> Fuck it, hey. I mean, my stepdad's a mess. And, you know, fucked me up in a lot of ways. But holy shit, man, my mom's never been anything but supportive. Right? If I if I came to my mom and said, I'm fucking struggling and I need therapy, she'd be like, well, let's get you therapy then. Right? Like, she, there wouldn't have been... Nothing but... I, I can't, I, I got no fucking complaint. Like, I'd probably say the only complaint I got about my mom is that she probably could have whooped my ass a little bit more. And I don't mean that physically. I mean that, like, you know, get up and go motivation style fucking whoop my ass. Right? Like, that's that's the only thing I could say. Like, I have a room for improvement. Beyond that? Mm -mm. Yeah. If I had ever come to my mom and said, you know, I'm, I'm fucking struggling, mom. I've got X, Y, and Z, and I, I think I need to talk to somebody. She'd be like, well, let's get you somebody then. What would have happened in this? It wouldn't have been a thing. I'm, I'm so fucking, like, yeah, lucky in that regard. It's fucking stepdad's a <clears throat> piece of work, but... Well, Watkins, maybe you will. I wonder sometimes how much human potential we're losing through societal dysfunction and all this other stuff. The amount of Einstein equivalents we're probably just lost is staggering. Chew toy. Oh, Miles, for sure. It'd be absolute fucking chaos. Um, Chaco, it's just shorthand. It's shorthand. It's fucking shorthand, man. That's It's just... I don't have time to go through the proper motivational methodologies for, you know, or pedagog uh, pedagogical methodologies for how a parent actually motivates a child through positive interaction. Like, look, I'm just fucking shorthanding this man. That's all I'm doing. Um, Chew Toy, there's an old episode of Star Trek TNG where I, I still think to this day about where there's this planned society out on a planet somewhere that they stumble across. It's humans. 
apparently generations and generations ago, some human group had like set out into the stars with the explicit expectation uh, or explicit um, purpose to genetically engineer and societally engineer a group of humans. Self done. Not not some master controller who's not subject to these systems, but the system itself, the entirety of the system is operated on that mechanism, on, in that manner. And I, I, I just, to this day, I remember these scenes of like Deanna Troy talking to this leader who was genetically designed to be a leader who was schooled to be a leader who was brought up in the society expecting him and understanding him to be this leader who had the schooling and the tools given to him to do this job to the very best of his ability with the expectation that they needed this person to fulfill this role and she's she's lamenting the loss of the free will element and he looks at her and he says but how many lost artists exist in your society how many possible picassos and rembrandts and einsteins went unfulfilled in your society because they were toiling as a janitor somewhere i i still think about that to this day like I, that chew toy that that freaks me out to this very fucking day the amount of lost human potential we have on a grand scale because our systems are so coercive so exploitative so oppressive and so poorly designed from a logistical standpoint who knows what we're throwing away we don't even know what we're throwing away it's it's, it's absolutely it freaks me the fuck out sometimes Morning, Zenlock. Uh, Chew toy, it's it's functionally not overpopulated. It's overpopulated for our current logistical layout, but it's not overpopulated. The 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 economists and um. Uh, various uh, like agricultural experts have weighed in on this time and time again. The the um, grow potential and capacity for the the planet Earth holds room for many many billions more. It's a logistical issue, and this is we know this just because we're already post scarcity. By all technical definitions, we're post scarcity. It's a logistics issue at the end of the day. Yeah, exactly. You gotta gotta beware the eco fash vibes. <laughs> that is okay so the butterflies are a bit cringe i will give you that but holy shit man oh and those filters look i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you right now i'm gonna go i'm gonna i'm gonna go full boomer on this one right okay so i'm referencing a video that Watkins put into put into fucking the discord server right those snapchat filters they're causing mental illness they're they're at the root of shit i look they're exacerbating. They're exacerbating. Um, yeah, like that shit. That shit's toxic as fuck. I, I, that stuff scares the shit out of me. There's generations of fucking kids growing up with that shit being normalized. Freaks me the fuck out, man. Aw. Let's see. When was your account created? Two days ago. Good on you for being able to hang on to that, that account for two days. I'm surprised nobody's fucking pulled it yet. That's that's mildly impressive. Um, Oh, and FYI, I smell like leather right now. If you were in this room right now and you, you were like next to me, I smell like leather. So for those of you who are here for DGEN story time, 
legitimately, I smell like leather. <laughs> I just caught a whiff as I as I like changed positions. I was like, "Yep, leather." Um, <laughs> it's weird as a sock dem inhabiting lefty spaces online. Sock dem socialist. It's a bit alarming seeing how many are explicitly omnicidal, lamenting human population, advocating killing off, losing a good proportion, returning to nature, whatever the fuck that is, being anti nuclear, etc. It's bizarre. <laughs> oh, well, there we go. There's the threats of violence. Um, chat message. Uh, threats are harm. Anyway. A Ramsey. How the fuck are you anti-nuclear? Like, do I need to send you, like... I know, right, Miles? Yeah, fucking fascist. How dare I infringe upon his ability to uh, threaten death threats, send death threats to people? <laughs> How dare I? Uh, New Zealand being pro-nuclear is not a popular position. Um, I can, I, I mean, I can put you on to like research from professors and people who are far more learned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shoot, 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 cupcake. Yeah. For everybody who doesn't know, J. Miles puts like heavy fucking sarcasm in all the time. Right? Like J. Miles is fucking like just dripping with sarcasm, like constantly. Um, Well, I mean, Miles has been around for fucking a while now. I know, Zartes. Zartes knew. You mean fission? Because nuclear power as it stands, Chaco, is fission, not fusion. But we can, I mean, do we need to watch the fucking, apparently we need to watch the video. <sighs> I mean, it's 35 fucking minutes. I'd rather, I'd rather like, fusion is better than fission, but we don't have f fusion down yet. Um... Okay, so this is Professor uh, Professor David Ruzik. Um, so those of you who don't know, he's um, the professor of engineering, Department of Nuclear Plasma and Radiological Engineering at the University of Illinois. Um, the link that I put in chat. Um, is hello. I'm Professor David Ruzik, Illinois Literally Energy the, Prof. Literally all of the talking points. And today, I'm going to tell you about dispelling the myths about nuclear power. This is a talk that I typically give to 
high school students and freshmen and non-majors. In fact, today we actually have a live by Zoom studio audience. We're not going to go through this whole thing, I'm but to talk about you need to see the beginning presented and then go watch the video. Detail in one of my other Illinois Energy Prof videos, but this is an overview. And I want to start this first by asking just a couple simple questions, all right? So think in your mind, don't go look it up, you know, th th there's no uh, grade being given. What percentage of U.S. energy yeah, we don't need to do this part. Are the objections to nuclear power? Okay? And I bet you know them. I bet you know. I bet if you just think in your mind, you'd say, ah, radiation, a.k.a. Simpsons, we're all going to end up with three eyes. All right? Accidents. Oh, my God, they could melt down and blow up like atom bombs, and, and that, that would be unmitigated disaster. And wastes. The wastes are there forever. There's no place to safely put them. We are hurting future generations like yours. These are the myths. Okay. And so if you have, if any of those are your objections, you need to watch that video. Because he's going to walk you through the science. He's going to walk you through the numbers. He's going to walk you through the statistics. He will, t he will hold your hand like a professor of engineering who specializes in, uh, you know, uh, radiological energy sources can. What are your objections, Anna Ramsey? We asked you, what the fuck, how, how, um, oh, fucking, it's the build time. The U.S. could build them faster. Yeah, it's it's the lead time apparently. Do you know what the distribution rate for a fucking solar a mass manufacture a mass manufactured solar panel? Like what do we Do you know what it would take to panel all of the US and set up the wind farms necessary? You're still looking at 10 plus years. Right? Like if if your only complaint is lead time, then I don't understand what your your complaint is at all. Because the lead time on paneling the entirety of the U.S. to the point where we would compensate our our power consumption. And besides, the U.S. primarily uses natural gas anyway. Oh, and the, the, the process of manufacturing panels is dirty as shit, too. Has anybody, any of y'all looked into how solar panels get manufactured? <laughs> They're not exactly a clean tech unto themselves. This, this, this shit ain't exactly fucking daisies and roses. All right. It's, there's some heavy metal mining going on there. There's some coal processing going on there. It's fucking rough there, too. Well, some slave labor, you know, a little bit of slave labor. But, I mean, you know, <laughs> what are we going to do? Fix this world without slave labor? Jesus Christ. Slavery was necessary. Tom Cotton. Uh, yeah, you need a moonshot program, Ramsey. You guys could build that. We went, Ramsey, 10 plus years to build a nuclear power plant. You shouldn't make, we went to the moon in 10 years. The U.S. architecture, right? And I, I the infrastructure of the United States if we let our military loose on this pro process, job done. 
right? Like there's, there's not much this system can't produce. It's just a matter of doing it. And if the will isn't there for fucking nuclear, the will isn't there for solar much either or wind. I, I, you know, if lead time's your only issue, then man. And also, um, let's see, Ramsey, you're in the Netherlands. Y'all don't manufacture fucking, uh, who builds your solar panels, Ramsey? Just out of curiosity. Where are y'all buying those solar panels from? If your objection is centralizing technologies Zartos, I, I, as as would be expected from a proud Turk. And use them as death rays. Now that sounds like a Greek, Zartos, not a Turk. Using your solar panels as death rays. Now that sounds Greek. I knew I'd get you, Zartos. Shit, they're coming for you, Zartos. Shut it down. Shut it down, Zartos. Just shut it all down. Go on the run, man. Go on the run. Um. <laughs> che. Oh, chew toy. That sucks. <laughs> when you want to know that face, would you want an awesome steampunk clean energy revolution using Sterling en engines and a flywheels? But it's never going to happen. Sad Pepe. Uh, oh, fucking Crystal. I agree. Yeah. Um, and Civic. Yeah. Yep. Um, Oh, Che, for sure. For sure. The only way, dude, the only way to truly equalize the system in America is personal nuclear devices. 100%. And I think the founding fathers under the Second Amendment would feel that way too. Yep. I think, I think, I think Madison and Jefferson would come together and agree for one of the few times in their lives that the proper interpretation of the Second Amendment is nuclear weapons for all. Yep. Yep. That, that's for sure how they would interpret that. <laughs> Fuck it. Stream man. <laughs> Recreational nukes. Yes, Caboose. Caboose gets it. Recreational nukes. One nuke to every militia. Do you have a musket or a blunderbuss? Actually, I think we have a musket in the family collection. Who needs a fallout shelter when you can have your own yard ICBM for mutually assured destruction, deterrence, level, home safety? Seems good. Um, or seems God. Maybe if we banned all weapons except nukes, this beast. <laughs> Has chat gone Pisanist? Is that is that where we've landed tonight? Is we've just gone full Pisanist? Oh, 
I mean, to be fair, Civic, if you've ever seen what a blunderbuss does up close, you'd actually prefer somebody to have like a fucking AK forty seven. Fucking if you have, have you ever seen what a blunderbuss does to a human body when fired at close range? Oof. I've been pronouncing Posadist as Posadist. You know what? Change approved, Civic. Uh, no, sorry, Exel. Exel, change approved. Posadist. From now on, we'll just call them Posadists. I like it. It removes the human from the body. Exactly, Beastie Cold. Dude, a fucking blunderbuss is like a shotgun on steroids. Can you technically see what a blunderbuss does if it doesn't leave anything behind? <laughs> if a tree falls in the forest, if a person gets shot with a blunderbuss at close range. <sighs> okay. I want to get that reading done. Ah. Uh... A Ramsey, or you could just accept it's not going to get fixed. China and the U.S. ain't going to do shit. Just get over it, man. You're fucked. Europe ain't Europe ain't counting for shit. Like, yeah. Like, dude, just just get on the nihilist train with this one and like climate nihilism. Yeah, it's time, man. It's time. Civic pointed out the shit that you needed that needed to be done needed to be done 40 years ago minimum <laughs> um And and a Ramsey. This is that's exactly why Cat and I both have been predicting Ecofash from the Zoomers for a couple of years now. Cat and I both firmly expect to see the Zoomers go Ecofash. Yeah, like I expect it to happen. I'm I'm expecting like some more weather underground type type activities from the, the Zoomers. I think that that's going to become a thing. The more climatological like endangerment that the Zoomer generation begins to experience. Uh, Eco-fascist, Jocko. I think that they're going to start getting violent about it. I think that there's going to be a generation of people who are looking at 60 years of climatological and ecological degradation ahead of them. And then they're like, they're thinking like, what if I wanted to have kids, right? Like they're looking down the barrel of it, right? Somebody like who's like an elder millennial like me, whatever, right? Boomers don't give a shit. They're literally on their way out the door. They're one foot out the door as we speak, right? I've the, the like elder millennials, Gen X doesn't give a shit because Gen X has never cared about anything whatsoever in their entire life. So, like, and then you have the millennials who are like, dude, we give a shit, but holy fuck, man. What about us middle-aged millennials? Uh, brain dead, I'd say fucking good luck. Um, like, but yeah, like, uh, yeah, Kat and I both have been predicting ecofash from the fucking G Gen Z for a while. Like, we're going to see some weather underground type shit. Not all Gen X. Eh. Choking. 98%. And, you know, Gen X accounts for, like, what, 0.1% of the population anyway? So, at the end of the day, it's a wash and you know it. I know it. And if I grew up, if my formative years were the Reagan administration, 
I get it. I get it. I'd, I'd fucking check out, too. Like, this is bullshit. Catch y'all later. Good luck with whatever the fuck you do. I'm just going to make sure that I don't starve to death and y'all can do you. Right? Like, I, I get it. Gen X is fucking rough. Yeah, Gemma, uh, Gemma right there. Welcome back, Gemma. But as a Gen Xer, you're not entirely wrong. Too much exposure to boomer, war baby, capitalist brainwash. Right? GL. Yeah. I, I'm close enough to understand how you feel. Um, yeah, exactly. Beastical. Like I said, they're just trying to make sure they don't starve to death. And that's it. That's all they've ever done. And I get it. Like, I 100% get it. Um, but, yeah. Shit's going to get real with the Gen, the Gen Zers. I don't know. Hey, you know that account that was in here doing the fucking death threats? They've already sent me and they've been actioned. So the account's gone. So they managed to last two days with that account. Um, all right. I Like I said, I like I've been saying for a fucking minute. All right, before I fucking get some like fucking bus truck construction sounds. Let me fix this. All right. A little curtsy. A little curtsy for you. Alright. Yeah, Chew Toy, they never have skill. Um, Alright. Let me do the alerts. Hmm. All right, follows. Disabled subs, disabled hosts, disabled bits, disabled raids, disabled. And alert system entirely disabled. Uh. <laughs> Civic. Uh. There's no point of being rich in an anarchistic society. Like the definition of rich would need revised in an anarchist society, Jocko. The definition of rich would be probably the person who knows the most people and has the most like productive, well-functioning, well-adjusted relationships with the most people, right? Like that would have to be like the definite, who just caught that weather again. That would be the definition of rich in an anarchist society. Um, all right. So we're going to do some more theory here because I've been working my way through this document. And if I don't like stay at it, I'll fucking take a break. I don't, Zartos. Although, my treat these days, since I'm not uh, strictly keto anymore, Zartos, uh, my treat these days, there are two things that I, I treat myself with, Zartos. A sweet potato with some maple syrup on it. Holy shit, right? Like, for somebody who was keto for years, like, the, the fucking chemical rush in my brain on that one. And the occasional, like, on, like, a uh, bad movie night... Like I'll um I'll do um a a fruit ice pop like you know um sort of like frozen fruit juice sort of thing right like conquered grape juice and that sort of thing like, right those those are my two at present no refined sugars other than the maple syrup the maple syrup is definitely a refined sugar but you know I I'm Vermonter by birth the fucking maples I grew up with maple syrup in my veins. Um, but you know, yeah, like sweet potato with some maple syrup, but no, no, like no other refined sugars, no like white sugar and shit like that. Um, so um, all right. Now let me make sure fucking make echoes is recording this time because fuck you make echoes. Uh, 
Oh, Zartos, you're looking to send a care package. Send it. Send the sweets. Send whatever you want. Here's Zartos. That's fine. Here's here's what I need you to not include, Zartos. Wheat. Nothing wheat-based. Everything else. If you want to put stuff that's sugar-rich, that's fine. I'll, I'll definitely take a look at it. I, 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 will, I, I will try it happily. But wheat stuff is just a dead no. Anything, anything gluten, barley, wheat, um, that sort of stuff. I am completely gluten sensitive. Um, I'm genetically tested for it. My grandmother almost fucking died from that shit, from celiacs. She almost shat herself to death. Gluten stuff is just a no-go entirely for me, Zartos. Um, other than that, if you wanted to like put sugar stuff in, that's fine. If it's a treat from halfway across the globe, by all means, I will happily try it. But yeah, the, the, the wheat stuff is like, will fuck me up. So please don't. (laughs) Um, uh, all right. I mean, in this country, everything's labeled whether it has gluten in it or not now. Um, but, like, here. There you go. Zartos, read that. Just just read that. That will give you the list. Thank you. All right. Oh, y'all ready for some anti ancap theory? I'm only going to do one section tonight. That's, that's, it's, we're only doing one section, but I really wanted, I was looking forward to doing this section. (laughs) Oh, this, this particular talking point is, uh, (laughs) this is a, this is a hell of a one. I mean, I hope you don't mean that, Civic, because, I mean, whatever. Anyway, I got work to do here. (laughs) All Chapter 2, Section 6. Do libertarian capitalists, or so-called anarcho-capitalists, support slavery? Yes. It may come as a surprise to many people, but right libertarianism is one of the few political theories that actually justifies slavery. For example, Robert Nozick asks whether, quote, a free system would allow the individual to sell himself into slavery, and he answers, I believe that it would. See Anarchy, State, and Utopia, page 371 for this citation. While some right libertarians do not agree with Nozick, there is no logical basis in their ideology for such a disagreement. The logic is simple. You cannot really own something unless you can sell it. Self-ownership is one of the cornerstones of laissez-faire capitalist ideology. Therefore, since you own yourself, you can sell yourself. For, Mar- uh, for Murray Rothbard's claims of the unenforceability and libertarian theory of voluntary slave contracts, see The Ethics of Liberty, pages 134 to 135. Of course, other libertarian theorists claim the exact opposite, so libertarian theory makes no such claims, but, you know, never mind that. 
essentially his point revolves around the assertion that a person cannot in nature sell himself into slavery and have this sale enforced for this would mean that his future will over his own body was being uh, uh, surrendered in advance. And that if a, quote, laborer remains totally subservient to his master's will voluntarily, he is not yet a slave since his submission is voluntary. Page 40. However, as noted in section two, Rothbard's emphasis on quitting fails to recognize that actual denial of will and control over one's own body that is explicit in wage labor. It's this failure that pro-slave contract libertarians stress. As we'll see, they consider the slave contract an extended wage contract. Moreover, a modern slave contract would likely take the form of performance bond. See page 136 for this citation. In which the slave agrees to perform X years labor or pay their master substantial damages. The threat of damages that enforce the contract in such a contract Rothbard does agree is enforceable, along with conditional exchange, C-141 for that citation, which could be another way of creating slave contracts. Nozick's defense of slavery should not really come as a surprise to anyone familiar with classical liberalism, an elite ide elitist ideology. Its main rationale is to defend liberty and power of property owners and justify unfree social relationships such as government and wage labor in terms of consent. Nozick just takes it to, it lo it to its logical conclusion, a conclusion which Rothbard, while balking at the label used, does not actually disagree with. This is because Nozick's argument is not new, but as with so many others, can be found in John Locke's work. The key difference is that Locke refused the term slavery and, f and favored drudgery. As for him, slavery meant a relationship between a lawful conqueror and a captive, where the former has the power of life and death over the latter. Once a compact is agreed between them, quote, an agreement for a limited power on the one side and obedience on the other, slavery ceases. As long as the master could not kill the slave, then it was drudgery. Like Nozick, he acknowledges that men did sell themselves, but it is plain this was only to drudgery, not for slavery, for it is evident the person sold was not under an absolute arbitrary despotical power, for the master could not have power to kill him at any time, whom at a certain time he was obliged to let go free out of his service. See Locke, Second Treatise of Government, section 24 for these citations. In other words, like Rothbard, voluntary slavery is fine, but you just need to call it something else. Not that Locke was bothered by involuntary slavery. <laughs> he was heavily involved in the slave trade. He owned shares in the Royal Africa Company, which carried on the slave trade for England, making a profit when he sold them. He also held a significant share in another slave company, the Bahama Adventurers. In the second treatise, Locke justified slavery in terms of captives taken in a just war. See section 85 for that little piece of work. In other words, a war waged against aggressors. That, of course, had nothing to do with the actual slavery Locke profited from. Slave raids were common, for example. Nor did his liberal principles stop him suggesting a constitution that would ensure that, quote, every free man of Carolina shall have absolute power and authority over his Negro slaves. The Constitution itself was typically autocratic, hierarchical, designed explicitly, explicitly to, quote, avoid erecting a numerous democracy. See the works of John Locke, vol volume 10, page 196, for these citations. So the notion of contractual slavery has a long history within right-wing liberalism, although most refuse to call it by that name. It is, of course, slightly, simply embarrassment that stops Rothbard calling a spade a spade in this instance. He incorrectly assumes that slavery has to be involuntary. In fact, historically, voluntary, voluntary slave contracts have been common. 
David Ellerman's Property and Contract in Economics has an excellent overview on this if you'd like to read more. Any new form of voluntary slavery would be a civilized form of slavery and could occur when an individual would agree to sell themselves to another as when a starving worker would agree to become a slave in return for food. In addition, the contract would be able to be broken under certain conditions. Perhaps in return for breaking the contract, the former slave would have to pay damages to his or her master for the labor their master would lose, a sizable amount, amount, no doubt, and such a payment could result in debt slavery, which is the most common form of civilized slavery. Such damages may be agreed in the contract as a performance bond or conditional exchange. In summary, right libertarians, and by extension so-called anarcho-capitalists, are talking about civilized slavery, or in other words, civil slavery, and not forced slavery. While some have reservations about calling it slavery, they do actually agree with the basic concept that since people own themselves, they can sell themselves as well as selling their labor for a lifetime. We must stress that this is no academic debate either. Voluntary slavery has been a problem in many societies and still exists in many countries today, especially less developed nations where bonded labor, i.e. where debt is used to enslave people, is the most common form. With the rise of sweatshops and child labor in many developed countries, such as the U.S., voluntary slavery, perhaps via debt and bonded labor, have become more common in other parts of the world. An ironic, if not surprising, result of freeing the market and being indifferent to the actual freedom of those within it. And it is interesting to note that even Murray Rothbard is not against the selling of humans. He argued that children are the property of their parents. They can, bar actually murdering them by violence, do whatever they please with them, even selling them on a, quote, flourishing free child market. Again, the ironically named The Ethics of Liberty, page 102. Combined with a wholehearted support for child labor, after all, the child can leave its parents if it objects to working for them, such a free child market could easily become a child slave market, with entrepreneurs making a healthy profit selling infants to other entrepreneurs who can make profits from the toil of their children, and such a process did actually occur in the 19th century Britain. Unsurprisingly, Rothbard ignores the possible nasty aspects of such a market in human flesh, such as children being sold to work in factories, homes, and brothels. And of course, such a market could see women women specializing in producing children for it. The use of child labor during the Industrial Revolution actually made it economically sensible for families to have more children, and perhaps gluts and scarcities of babies due to changing market conditions. But that's beside the point. Of course, this theoretical justification for slavery at the heart of an ideology calling, it, calling itself libertarianism is hard for many right libertarians to accept. So some of the so-called anarcho-capitalist types argue that such contracts would be very hard to enforce in their system of capitalism. This attempt to get out of the contradiction fails simply because it ignores the nature of the capitalist market. If there is a demand for slave contracts to be enforced, then companies will develop to provide that service. And it would be interesting to see how two protection firms, one defending slave contracts and another not, could compromise and reach a peaceful agreement over whether slave contracts were valid. Thus, we could see these so-called anarchist or free society producing companies whose specific purpose was to hunt down escaped slaves. Hmm seem to remind me of something, i.e. individuals in slave contracts who had not paid damages to their owners for freedom. Of course, perhaps Rothbard would claim that such slave contracts would be outlawed under his general libertarian law code, but this is a denial of market freedom. If slave contracts are banned then surely this is paternalism, stopping individuals from contracting out their, laboring, uh, their labor services to whom and however long they desire for. You can't have it both ways in this instance. 
So, ironically, an ideology proclaiming itself to support liberty ends up justifying and defending slavery. Indeed, for the right libertarian, the slave contract is an exemplification, not the denial of individuals' liberty. How is this possible? How can slavery be supported as an expression of liberty? Simple. Right libertarian support for slavery is a symptom of a deeper authoritarianism, namely their uncritical acceptance of contract theory. The central claim of contract theory is that contract is the means to secure and enhance individual freedom. Slavery is the antithesis to freedom, and so, in theory, contract and slavery must be mutually exclusive. However, as indicated above, some contract theorists, both past and present, have included slave contracts among legitimate contracts. This suggests that contract theory cannot provide the theoretical support needed to secure and enhance individual freedom. So why is this? Well, as Carol Pateman argues, quote, Contract theory is primarily about a way of creating social relations constituted by subordination, not about exchange. Rather than undermining subordination, contract theorists justify modern subjection. Contract doctrine has proclaimed that subjection to a master, a boss, a husband, is freedom. You can see more on this in her seminal work, The, the Sexual Contract, page 40 and pages, oh, page 146. The question central to contract theory, and so right libertarianism, is not are people free as one would expect, but are people free to subordinate themselves in any manner they please? A radically different question, and one only fitting to someone who does not know what liberty means. Anarchists argue that not all contracts are legitimate, and no free individual can make a contract that denies their own freedom. If an individual is able to express themselves by making free agreements, then those free agreements must also be based upon a freedom internally as well. Any agreement that creates domination or hierarchy negates the assumptions underlying the agreement and makes itself null and void. In other words, voluntary government is still government, and the defining characteristics of an anarchy must be surely no rulers, no masters. This is most easily seen in the extreme case of the slave contract. John Stuart Mill stated that such a contract would be null and void. He argued that any individual may voluntarily choose to enter such a contract, but in doing so, he abdicates his liberty. He forgoes any future use of it beyond that single act. He therefore defeats, in his own case, the very purpose which is the justification of allowing him to dispose of himself. The principle of freedom cannot require that he should be free not to be free. It is not freedom to be allowed to alienate his freedom. He adds that these reasons, the force of which is so conspicuous in this case, are evidently of far wider application. And it is such an application that defenders of capitalism fear. Mill did, in fact, apply these reasons wider and unsurprisingly became a supporter of market syndicalist form of socialism. If we reject slave contracts as illegitimate then, logically, we must also reject All contracts that express qualities similar to slavery, i.e. deny freedom, including wage slavery. Given that, as David Ellerman points out, quote, the voluntary slave and the the employee cannot, in fact, take their will out of their intentional actions so that they could be employed by the master or employer. We're left with the rather implausible assertion that a person can vacate his or her will for eight or so hours a day for weeks, months, or years on end, but cannot do so for a working lifetime. See Property and Contract in Economics, page 58, for that citation. The implications of supporting voluntary slavery is quite devastating in all forms of right-wing libertarianism. This was proven by Ellerman when he wrote an extremely robust defense of it under the pseudonym J. Fillmore called The Libertarian Case for Slavery, first published in the Philosophical Forum, 1982. This classical rebuttal takes the form of proof by contradiction, or reducto ad absurdum, whereby 
he takes the arguments of right libertarianism to their logical end and shows how they reach the memorably con a memorable conclusion that the time has come for liberal economic and political thinkers to stop dodging this issue and to critically re-examine their shared prejudices about certain voluntary social institutions. This critical process will inexorably drive liberalism to its only logical conclusion, libertarianism that finally lays true moral foundations for economic and political slavery. Auerman shows how from a right libertarian perspective, there is a fundamental contradiction in a modern liberal society for the state to prohibit slave contracts. He notes that there, quote, seems to be a basic shared prejudice of liberalism that slavery, slavery is inherently involuntary. So the issue of genuinely voluntary slavery has received little scrutiny. The perfectly valid liberal argument that involuntary slavery is inherently unjust is thus taken to include voluntary slavery, in which case the argument, by definition, does not apply. This has resulted in an abridgment of the freedom of contract in modern liberal society. Thus, it is possible to argue for a civilized form of contractual slavery. So accurate and logical was Ellerman's article that many of its readers were convinced it was written by a right libertarian, including, we have to say, many of the people involved in the creation of this document originally. One such writer was Carol Pateman, who correctly noted that, quote, there is a nice historical irony here. In the American South, slaves were emancipated and turned into wage laborers. And now American contractarians argue that all workers should have the opportunity to turn themselves into civil slaves. The aim of Ellerman's article was to show the problems that employment, wage labor, presents for the concept of self-government and how contract need not result in social relationships based on freedom. As Fillmore put it, any thorough and decisive critique of voluntary slavery or constitutional non-democratic government would carry over to the employment contract, which is the voluntary contractual basis for the free market free enterprise system. Such a critique would thus be reducto ad absurdum. As contractual slavery is an extension of the employer-employee contract, he shows that the difference between wage labor and slavery is the time scale rather than the principal or social relationships involved. This explains, firstly, the early workers' movement called capitalism wage slavery, as anarchists still do, and secondly, why capitalists like Rothbard support the concept but balk at the name. It exposes the unfree nature of the system they support, while it's possible to present wage labor as freedom due to its consensual nature. It becomes much harder to do so when talking about slavery or dictatorship. Then the contradictions are exposed for all to see and be horrified by. All this does... Uh, all this does not mean that we must just oh, we must reject free agreement. Far from it. Free agreement is essential for a society based upon individual dignity and liberty. There are various forms of free agreement, and anarchists support those based upon cooperation and self-management, i.e. individuals working together as equals. Anarchists desire to create relationships which reflect and so express the liberty that is the basis of free agreement. Capitalism creates relationships that deny liberty. The opposition, between, uh, the opposition between autonomy and subjection can only be maintained by modifying or rejecting contract theory, something that capitalism cannot do, and so the right-wing libertarian rejects autonomy in favor of subjection, and so rejects socialism in favor of capitalism. The real contrast between anarchism and right libertarianism is best expressed in their respective opinions on slavery. Anarchism is based upon the individual whose individuality depends upon the maintenance of free relationships with other individuals. If individuals deny their capacities for self-government from themselves through a contract, the individuals bring about a qualitative change in their relationship to others. Freedom is turned into mastery and subordination. For the anarchist, slavery is thus the paradigm of what freedom is not, instead of an exemplification of what is as right libertarian state. As Proudhon argued, if I were asked to answer the following question, what is slavery? And I should answer in one word, 
It is murder. My meaning would be understood at once. No extended argument would be required to show that the power to take from a man his thought, his will, his personality is a power of life and death, and that to enslave a man is to kill him. Page 37, what is property? In contrast, the right libertarian effectively argues that I support slavery because I believe in liberty. It is a sad reflection of the ethical and intellectual bankruptcy of our society that such an argument is actually taken seriously by anyone, let alone any appreciable amount of people. The concept of slavery as freedom is far too Orwellian to even warrant a critique. We'll, we will leave it up to right libertarians to corrupt our language and ethical standards with an attempt to prove it, I suppose. From the basic insight that slavery is the opposition of freedom, the anarchist rejection of authoritarian social relations quickly follows the right-wing libertarians' fear. Libertarian, uh, liberty is inviolable. It can neither, I can neither sell nor alienate my liberty. Every contract, every condition of a contract, which has in the view of alienation or suspension of liberty is null. The slave, when he plants his foot upon the soil of liberty at that moment, becomes a free man. Liberty is the original condition of man. To renounce liberty is to renounce the nature of man. After that, how could we perform the acts of man? Proudhon, page 67. The employment contract, i.e. wage slavery, abrogates liberty. It is based upon inequality of power, and exploitation is a consequence of the fact that the sale of labor power entails the worker's subordination. Hence, Proudhon and Mill's effort of self, uh, support of self-management and opposition to capitalism. Any relationship that resembles slavery is illegitimate, and no contract that creates a relationship of subordination is valid. Thus, in a truly anarchistic society, slave contracts would be unenforceable. People in a truly free, i.e. non-capitalist society, would never tolerate such a horrible institution or consider it a valid agreement. If someone was silly enough to sign such a contract, they would simply have to say they now rejected it in order to be free. Such contracts are made to be broken, and without the force of law and system and private defense firms to back it up, such contracts would stay broken. The right libertarian and the so-called anarcho-capitalists Support for slave contracts and wage slavery indicates that their ideology has little to do with liberty and far more to do with justifying property and the oppression and exploitation it produces. Their support and theoretical support for slavery indicates a deeper authoritarianism which negates their claims to be libertarians. All right. Now y'all know why I, I was looking forward to doing that one. ANCAP supports slavery, y'all. They support slavery. Like, I was legitimately looking forward to doing that section. The logical conclusion of the... Ex the logical conclusion of their fucking... Their ideology is slavery. It's fucking slavery. Like, we talk about company towns and shit. That's slavery. That's fucking slavery. Right, like the, the logical conclusion of their of what they spout off is fucking slavery. That's what they want. They want you as a slave. When they talk about this shit, they want you as a slave. No hierarchy, but slavery, good. And caps, yeah. Thank, you. thank you, Monsieur. Monsieur Bales. Um, thank you. I I, just, I was looking forward to that one yesterday. I'm like, but the contract is consensual. Yeah. I I I I just 
this is this, this is this is why like this is you start y'all like y'all starting to like I know most of you are here like right I have to phrase it this way though but like y'all starting to catch up on this shit now you starting to understand why 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 Kai takes it personally that these motherfuckers use the title anarchist right there's a bunch of fucking alt right crazy motherfuckers who are out there supporting slavery and fucking indentured servitude in company towns by espousing their fucking bullshit ideology who are rank anti empiricists who turn their nose up at the scientific method and they call themselves anarchists. As somebody who has been an anarchist for decades and has put time money, blood, sweat, and tears, right, into this endeavor. I take it personally when somebody comes up in my house like that. It, it's it's an insult. It is a smack in my face. Like, oh, no, we're anarchists. It's just a different definition. Fuck you. Fuck you. Like, that's, that's all I got. Like, fuck you. <laughs> How dare you? You fucking slave catching piece of shit. Right? Fucking private defense firms. Private fucking fire departments. Oh, fuck you. Your house burns down if you haven't paid us. Fuck you. If you don't have an Amazon Fire Plus subscription, your house burns. Right? Oh, Oh, you don't have the Disney Plus plan? Oh, well, in that case, your kid doesn't get educated. Fuck you. Yeah, I take this shit personally. Yeah, I take it fucking personally. Also, I don't like being gaslit, which is what they do, by the way, all the time. They gaslight all the fuck time. Oh well, it's just you know our, our 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 hurdle for a just hierarchy is different. Our definition for a just hierarchy is just different than yours. Fuck you. Slavery is not just. I don't care how you fucking couch the terminology, because that entire section calls Rothbard out pretty hard. Because that's where they get that shit. Rothbard argued in bad faith all the time. He argued in bad faith all the time. Like, oh, I'm going to support slavery. I'm just not going to call it slavery. Fuck you. Yeah. No, no, no. You just don't understand. No, we do. That's why we hate you. There isn't, there isn't an anarchist at commune. There isn't a black block. There isn't a segment of anarchists the globe over where you walk up to and say, hey, I'm an ANCAP. I'm one of you. Where you won't likely, one, get your ass fucking kicked. Or two, get shown the door very quickly. Get the fuck out of here, you capitalist prick. How, 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 how do you think an oppressive wage slave system is anarchistic? Get the fuck out of here. Fuck you. Which is why... We're reading this document because somebody needs to read it. Nobody fucking reads this shit. Nobody reads theory, but people will listen to a podcast. People will listen to people read. Um, <laughs> to quote a mediocre sci-fi cartoon series, that just sounds like slavery with extra steps. Capital systems or what degree of slavery do you find acceptable? Hardcore sock down would go with zero, but it tends not to, I, you know, That's, that's actually kind of short. You know what? Y'all, we're going to keep going. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, so Kai's completionist brain has just kicked in, y'all. We're within striking distance of the end of Chapter 2. If I could get through Chapter 2, I'd feel good. Right? Right? Like, I'd feel good about that. We have chat. We have section seven, which is about a page. Centrist. Can we have a little slavery? Exactly, Viva. Section eight. 
is kind of long. It's not super long. It's not like the 45, 50 minute long. Oh, cricks? No, I haven't. But for the love of God, please don't. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Oh. All right. Oh. <laughs> break my brain, Cricks. It'll break my brain. I won't be able to get this done. Um. Hang on to it, though, Cricks, because there, there will be a moment where I'll want to see that, for sure. For sure. Um, later, Crystal. Take care of yourself. All right. Chapter 2, Section 7. But surely abolishing capitalism would restrict liberty. Many so-called anarcho-capitalists and other supporters of capitalism will argue that it would be authoritarian to restrict the number of alternatives that people can choose between by abolishing capitalism. If workers become wage laborers, so it is argued, it's because they value other things more. Otherwise, they would not agree to the exchange. But such an argument ignores the reality of capitalism. By maintaining capitalist private property, the options available to people are restricted. In a fully developed capitalist economy, the vast majority have the option of selling their labor or starving or living in poverty. Self-employed workers account for less than 10% of the working population. Usually workers are at a disadvantage on the labor market due to the existence of unemployment and so accept wage labor because otherwise they would starve. We'll be covering more about this uh, in uh, chapter 10, section 2 and why this is the case. And even if the majority of the working population desired cooperative workplaces, a capitalist market will not provide them with the outcome due to the nature of capitalist workplaces. See Juliet C. Shore's excellent book, The Overworked American, for a discussion of why workers' desire for more free time is not reflected in the labor market. In other words, it is a myth to claim that wage labor exists or that workplaces are hierarchical because workers value other things. They're hierarchical because bosses have more clout on the market than workers. And to use Shore's expression, workers end up wanting what they get rather than what they, getting what they want. Looking at the reality of capitalism, we find that because of inequality in resources, protected by the full might of the legal systems, we should note, those with property get to govern those without it during working hours and beyond in many cases. If the supporters of capitalism were actually concerned about liberty as opposed to property, their situation would be abhorrent to them. After all, individuals can no longer exercise the, their ability to make decisions, choices, and are reduced to being order takers. If choice and liberty are the things we value, then the ability to make choices in all aspects of life automatically follows, including during work hours. However, the authoritarian relationships and the continual violation of autonomy wage labor implies are irrelevant to these so-called anarcho-capitalists. Indeed, attempts to change this situation are denounced as violations of the autonomy of the property owner. By purely concentrating on the moment that a contract is signed, they blind themselves to the restricts of liberty that wage contracts create. Of course, anarchists have no desire to ban wage labor. We aim to create a society within which people are not forced by circumstances to sell their liberty to others. In order to do this, anarchists propose a modification of property and property rights to ensure true freedom of choice, a freedom of choice denied to us by capitalism. As we've noted many times, bilateral exchanges can and do adversely affect the position of third parties if they result in the buildup of power or money in the hands of a few. And one of these adverse effects can be the restriction of workers' options due to economic power. 
Therefore, it is the supporter of capitalism who restricts options by supporting an economic system and rights framework that by their very workings reduce the options available to the majority who then are free to choose between those that remain. Anarchists, in contrast, desire to expand the available options by abolishing capitalist private property rights and removing inequalities in wealth and power that help restrict our options and liberties artificially. So, does an anarchist society have much to fear from the spread of wage labor from within? Probably not. If we look at societies such as the early United States or the beginnings of the Industrial Revolution in Britain, for example, we find that given the choice most people preferred to work for themselves, capitalists found it hard enough to find workers to employ, and the amount of wages that had to be offered to hire workers were so high that to destroy any profit margin. Over, uh, moreover, the mobility of workers and their laziness was frequently commented upon with, workers dis uh, with employers despairing at the fact workers would just work enough to make ends meet and then disappear. Thus, left to the actions of the free market, it's doubtful that wage labor would have spread, but it wasn't left to the free market. In response to these problems, capitalists turned, turned to the state and enforced various restrictions on society, the most important being the land, tariffs, and money monopolies. In free competition between artisan and wage labor, wage labor only succeeded due to the use of state action to create the required circumstances to discipline the labor force and to accumulate enough capital to give capitalists an edge over the artisan production. Thus, an anarchist society would not have to fear the spreading of wage labor within it. This is simply because would-be capitalists, like those in the early United States, would have to offer such excellent conditions, workers' control, and high wages as to make the possibility of extensive profit from workers' labor nearly impossible. Without the, uh, without the state to support them, they will not be able to accumulate enough capital to give them an advantage within a free society. Moreover, it's somewhat ironic to hear capitalists talking about anarchism denying choice when we oppose wage labor, considering the fact that workers were not given any choice when the capitalists used the state to develop wage labor in the first place. Told you. I told you that one was a, a just a banger. I could bang that one out. It was short. Section 8, though, is going to be a little bit longer. We'll see how this goes. I can feel my sort of... I'm waning. I'm waning a little bit. Um, all right. <clears throat> Chapter 2, Section 8. Why should we reject the anarcho-capitalist definitions of freedom and justice? simply because they lead to the creation of authoritarian social relationships and so, and so to restrictions on liberty. A political theory which, when consistently followed, has evil or... Is there a word worse than evil? Consequences is just bad theory. For example, any theory that can justify slavery is obviously a bad theory. Slavery does not cease to stink the moment it's seen to follow your theory. As right libertarians can justify slave contracts as a type of wage labor, see section, uh, chapter 2, section 6 for this, as well as numerous other authoritarian social relationships, it's obviously a bad theory. It's worth quoting Noam Chomsky at length on this subject. Consider, for example, the entitlement theory of justice. According to this theory, a person has a right to whatever that he has acquired by means that are just. If by luck or labor or ingenuity, a person acquires such and such, then he is entitled to keep it and dispose of it as he wills, and a just society will not infringe on this right. One can easily determine where such a principle might lead. It is entirely possible that by legitimate means, say, luck supplemented by contractual arrangements freely undertaken under pressure of need, one person might gain control of the necessities of life. 
Others are then free to sell themselves to this person as slaves, if he is willing to accept them. Otherwise, they're free to perish. Without extra question begging conditions, this society is just. The argument has all the merits of a proof that 2 plus 2 equals 5. Suppose that some concept of a just society is advanced that fails to characterize the situation just described as unjust. Then one of two conclusions is in order. We may conclude that the concept is simply unimportant and of no interest as a guide to thought or action since it fails to apply uh, properly even in such an elementary case as this. Or... We may conclude that the concept advanced is to be dismissed in that it fails to correspond to the pre-theoretical notion that it intends to capture in clear cases. If our intuitive concept of justice is clear enough to rule social arrangements of, of the sort described as grossly unjust, then the sole interest of a demonstration that this outcome might be just under a given theory of justice lies in the inference by reducto ad absurdum to the conclusion that the theory is hopelessly inadequate. While it may capture some partial intuition regarding justice, it is evidently it evidently neglects others. The real question to be raised about theories that fail so completely to capture the concept of justice in its significant and intuitive sense is why they arouse such interest. Why are they not simply dismissed out of hands uh, out of hand on the grounds of this failure, which is striking in clear cases? Perhaps the answer is in part the one given by Edward Greenberg in a discussion of some recent work on the entitlement theory of justice. After reviewing empirical and conceptual shortcomings, he observes that such work, quote, plays an important function in the process of blaming the victim and of protecting property against egalitarian onslaughts by various non-property groups, end quote. In ideological defensive privileges, exploitation and private power will be welcomed regardless of its merits. These matters are of no small importance to poor and oppressed people here and elsewhere. This extended quote you can be found in the Chomsky Reader, page 187 to 188. It may be argued that the reductions in liberty associated with capitalism is not really an iniquitous outcome. But such an argument is hardly fitting for a theory proclaiming itself libertarian. And the results of these authoritarian social relationships? Well, to quote Adam Smith, you know, the father of capitalism, under the capitalist division of labor, the worker, quote, has no occasion to exert his understanding or exercise his invention. And he naturally loses, therefore, the habit of such exercise and generally becomes as stupid and ignorant as it is possible for a human creature to become. The worker's mind falls, quote, into that drowsy stupidity, which in a civilized society seems to benumb the understanding of almost all of the inferior ranks of people. Cited by Chomsky, page 187. Of course... It may be argued that these evil effects of capitalist authority relationships, uh, relations on individuals are not so iniquitous or that very real dominations of workers by bosses is not really domination. But that suggests a desire to sacrifice real individuals, their hopes and dreams and li lives to an abstract concept of liberty, the accumulative effect of which would be to impoverish all our lives. The kind of relationships we create within the organizations we join are of as great an importance as their voluntary nature. Social relations shape the individual in many ways, restricting their freedom, their perceptions of what freedom is and what their interests actually are. This means that in order to be non-farcical, any relationship we create must reflect in their internal workings the critical evaluation and self-government that created them in the first place. Sadly, capitalist individualism masks structures of power and relations of domination and subordination within seemingly voluntary associations. It fails to note the relations of domination resulting from private property. And so, quote, what has been called individualism up until now has only been a foolish egoism which belittles the individual. Foolish because it's not individualism at all. It did not lead to what is established as a goal. That is the complete, broad, and most perfectly attainable development of individuality. Kropotkin, Selected Writings, page 297. 
This right libertarian lack of concern for concrete individual freedom and individuality is a reflection of their support for freer markets or economic liberty, as they sometimes phrase it. However, as Max Stirner noted, this fails to understand that, quote, political liberty means that the polis, the state, is free, not therefore that I am free of the state. It does not mean my liberty, but the liberty of a power that rules and subjugates me. It means that one of my despots is free. The ego in its own, page 107. Thus, the desire for free markets results in a blindness that while the markets may be free, the individual within it may not be. As Stirner was well aware, quote, under the re uh, regime of the commonality, the laborers always fall into the hands of the possessors of the capitalists, therefore, page 115. In other words, Right libertarians give the greatest importance to an abstract concept of freedom and fail to take into account the real concrete freedom is the outcome of self-managed activity, solidarity, and voluntary cooperation. For liberty to be real, it must exist in all aspects of our daily life and cannot be con contracted away without seriously affecting our minds, bodies, and lives. Thus, the right libertarian's defense of freedom is undermined by their insistence of the concept of neg negative liberty, which all too easily translates in experience as the negation of liberty. Newman's, uh, Newman's liberalism at wit's end, page 161. Thus, right libertarian's fundamental fallacy is that contract does not result in the end of power or domination, particularly when the bargaining power or wealth of the would-be contractors is not equal. As Carol Pateman notes, quote, ironically, the contractarian ideal cannot encompass a capitalist employment. Employment is not a continual series of discrete contracts between employer and worker, but one contract in which a worker binds himself to enter an enterprise and follow the directions of the employer for the duration of the con contract. As Hugh Benyon has bluntly stated, workers are paid to obey. Page 148 in the sexual contract. This means that the employment contract, like the marriage contract, is not an exchange. Both contracts create social relations that endure over time, social relations of subordination. Authority impoverishes us all and must therefore be combated wherever it appears. That is why anarchists oppose capitalism, so that there shall be, quote, no more government of man by man by means of accumulation of capital, Proudhon cited by Woodcock in Anarchism, 110, uh, page 110. If, as Bookchin pointed out, the object of anarchism is to increase choice, Ecology of Freedom, page 70, then this applies both to when we are creating associations and relationships with others and when we are within these associations or relationships with others, i.e. that they are consistent with the liberty of all, and that implies par participation as self-management, not hierarchy. So-called anarcho-capitalism fails to understand this essential point, and by concentrating purely on the first condition for liberty, ensures a society based upon domination, oppression, and hierarchy, not freedom. It is unsurprising, therefore, to find that the basic unit of analysis for these so-called anarcho-capitalist right-leaning libertarians is the transaction, the trade, the contract. The freedom of the individual is seen as revolving around an act, the contract, and not in our relations with others. All the social facts and mechanisms that precede, surround, and result from the transaction are omitted. In particular, the social relations that result from the transaction are ignored. Those and the circumstances that make people contract are the two unmentionables of right libertarianism. For anarchists, it seems strange to concentrate on the moment that a contract is signed and ignore the far longer time the contract is active for. If the worker is free when they sign a contract, slavery soon overtakes them. Yes, the voluntary nature of decision is important, but so are the social relationships we experience due to those decisions. For the anarchist, freedom is based upon the insight that other people, apart from indeed because of, having their own intrinsic value also are means to my end. That is, through their freedom that I gain my own. 
so enriching my life. Or as Bakunin put it, I who want to be free cannot be because all the men around me do not yet want to be free. And consequently, they become tools of oppression against me. This was also further quoted by Malatesta. Therefore, anarchists argue that we must reject the right libertarian theories of freedom and justice because they end up supporting the denial of liberty as the expression of liberty. What this fails to recognize is that freedom is a product of social life and that, in Bakunin's words, no man can achieve his own emancipation without at the same time working for the emancipation of all men around him. My freedom is the freedom of all since I am not truly free in thought and in fact except when my freedom and my rights are confirmed and approved in the freedom and rights of all men who are my equals. Other people give us the possibilities to develop our full human potentiality and thereby our freedom. So when we destroy the freedom of others, we limit our own. To treat others and oneself as property, argued anarchist L. Susan Brown, objectifies the human individual, denies the unity of subject and object, and is a negation of individual will. Even the freedom gained by the other is compromised by this relationship, for to negate the will of another to achieve one's own freedom destroys the very freedom one sought in the first place. Page 3, The Politics of Individualism. Fundamentally, it is for this reason that anarchists reject the right libertarian theories of freedom and justice. It just does not ensure individual freedom or individuality. Chapter 2 in the bag. I don't know if Third Fig is still here. That was 20 minutes ago, but thank you for the follow. Oh, that's chapter 3 in the bag. That feels good. I mean, chapter two in the bag. Sorry, that's chapter two in the bag. Yeah, basically, night letter. An injustice anywhere is an injustice everywhere. Take take your fucking pick. Right? Like it, it really doesn't matter how you word it. But as long as you can be contracted to jackboot thug your way into my house, I'm not free. Right? If if I can convince a bunch of fucking morons to hire on and storm their way into your house, and then I can convince a bunch of other fucking morons in society to feel that it's justified. You're not free. So until you convince me of that freedom, then freedom doesn't exist. It, it is actually a social exercise. This is one of the many reasons that I talk about the torchbearer thing. Humanity isn't ready. It's not ready. Right? Like there's too many fucking authoritarians. There's too many bootlicking supplicants. There's too many people willing to go along with the program and maintain the status quo. It's that's that's just the truth of the matter. So, and hey there, night. Um, cool. Normal and righteous, good old Calvinism. Good old Calvinism. Um, Yep. Yep. Caboose. I'm, I'm feeling that way too. I'm feeling that way too. So we're just going to, I'm just going to kick this off. Um, it's going to be a low fucking raid too. Cause there's not many people here. Dude. Reading theory does not hold people. 
Degen fucking holds people. Fucking theory reads. That's fucking rough. Oh. Che. I gave of myself what I could tonight. Um. I still have to download the VOD and trim out the DGen story time. Like my, my post show workflow is getting extended these days. So I've still got half an hour of shit to do. Oh, uh, yeah, well. Um, no worries, Jay. Um, yeah. Yeah, I have to wait for fucking Twitch to process the VOD and then I have to download it and then trim it up and Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, I tomorrow tomorrow I'll have another DGen No, no, no. Thursday I'll have a DGen story time. Thursday because tomorrow night I'm going to after stream do some stuff that I'll tell you about Thursday. So Thursday's show is going to have a D-Gen story time too. So, um, catch y'all later. <laughs>